Look no further. This is the imperialism of all imperialisms as we're looking to crown a victor of the world with every NCAA 14 team competing across every continent and ocean. Or as I like to call it, world domination. <laughs> every conference will be randomly assigned to a continent or ocean. From there, each conference will engage in intercontinental warfare. The victor of each conference will compete for world domination. Each continent has a unique set of challenges that each team has to play by and overcome. In the playoffs, you bring out the big guns. For every win the victor has in the regular season, they get to steal that many players from defeated teams in the conference. Group of five conferences gets a times two multiplier. In addition, the champion for every continent gets two 99 overall campus legends to join their team in the playoffs. One for offense, one for defense. First, let's figure out what conference is playing for what territory. Let's spin and determine who competes for North America. Sun Belt Conference representing North America. America. Of the remaining conferences, it looks like the Big Ten. The Big Ten slated for South America. Let's jump over to Europe. That is Mountain West football. Bring in the blue and the Pac-2 with them. The Big 12 is headed to Asia. The map is beginning to shape up. Jumping down to Africa, the Africa runs through the ACC. Kicking it down to Australia, the conference competing for glory is Conference USA. Only three conferences remain and one landmass is left. That is Antarctica, and it's going to fall to the SEC. So there you have it. Part one of global imperialism is going to run through the SEC here in a conquest for Antarctica. So the American Conference will square off for the Pacific Ocean and the MAC will square off for the Atlantic. With that sorted out, our adventure starts at the bottom of planet Earth in Antarctica, a continent made up of mostly ice. It's fair to say that it's cold down here and playing college football is not going to be easy. Here are the Antarctica challenges that we will have to abide by in these intercontinental matchups. 10 minute quarters, only snow games, only night games. Every game will be played at a neutral site. In fact, it'll be at the coldest field in all of college football, which happens to be Laramie, Wyoming. Losing teams get a cold spell ability where they can freeze the winning team for one drive of their choice in the fourth quarter, forcing them to sub in second string offense or defense. The SEC was randomly mapped out here to Antarctica determined by the wheel. And speaking of the wheel, let's spin it to determine who will be the first aggressor in this war for the world. It's the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Mississippi State is going to have to go up north, and that means their border is going to clash in a matchup against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Conditions are brutal out here, as this is what it would be like on Antarctica. You can hardly see the field with this much snow, but we do know that Spencer Rattler and the South Carolina Gamecocks are driving down the field into the red zone. Down by 12, this is an extremely important possession here with only six minutes to go. He's going to go for the end zone. He's got a man in the snow. That is a big six, number 89. Rattler's had a day three ints and extremely low completion percentage. South Carolina has just decided to use their cold spell ability since they are the losing team here in the fourth quarter, forcing Mississippi State to go to second string. Here in Antarctica, if you don't recall, the losing team gets the ability to freeze the opponent, forcing them to go a second string. But it only lasts for one drive, and it looks like the second string offense is going to get the first down. Gamecocks trying to bet on their defense to get the stop so the offense gets another crack. Third and eight, can the back quarterback deliver a ball here he throws one out complete but it's well short so the cold spell ability pays off for South Carolina but it's third and seven and Rattler has got to convert this play he's going deep and he's got a man what a catch all the way past midfield insane in the membrane with only two and a half minutes left this would be quite the comeback but he is decked and Mississippi State defense all over him that sack led to a huge fourth down but South Carolina chooses to punt it and there's a good chance they may never see this ball back first string offense back in the game halfback draw it's going nowhere so South Carolina will get a shot the clock is ticking Rattler is moving the ball down the field he's got a wide open receiver all the way down to first and goal Rattler looking to pull out the biggest play of his young life he does find a man for a touchdown Eddie Lewis I cannot believe what we are witnessing here Spencer Rattler was able to drive his team down and take the lead what a fourth quarter turn of events it's up to Will Rogers and the Bulldogs who find a wide open man he's going down the sideline huge 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 play for as much snow as falling in this game the offenses are not stuttering one bit nine seconds left he keeps it he flicks it out to the running back he's open for a game winning touchdown Seth Davis are you not entertained in the first game of the entire global imperialism conquest sit back relax it's gonna be a good one what a freaking game all right we got first blood Mississippi State strikes down the Gamecocks and with that the Gamecocks lose their territory Mississippi State 
expands. Let's see who's got next on the frozen tundra. It looks like the new SEC team, the Texas Longhorns are up. Gonna have to go left and up a bit, which at that trajectory means a in-state battle between the Longhorns and the Aggies. Quinn Ewers and the Texas Longhorns up by three over the Aggies in the Lone Star Showdown. This one is a heavy snow battle, something they're not used to in Texas, but that touchdown gives them a big cushion. Aggies have not been able to muster up anything in the fourth quarter. They still have the cold spell ability, so I'd imagine they use it here next. But the unfortunate reality in this situation is that there is little time left, so they have to score twice, and this stop will at least give them a chance. With second string defense, and in theory, the offensive line should get a break, receivers should get more separation, but when you're bricking those, that ain't helpful. Big third down here, dropping back with the slip screen. It's not gonna work. This is the game on the line for Texas and i going up against second stringers, and they cannot get a first down. Longhorns defense holds, and that's gonna do it. Hook them horns, they're moving on. Aggies take the fall, long Longhorns swoop in and take that land. It is going to fall in Georgia's lap to determine what they do next. And their conquest is going to take them to the right. That spells like a heavyweight matchup, Georgia versus Alabama. Alabama up by 10 over the Bulldogs and threatening to do more here. First and goal, Milrow going up across the middle. He's got a man. He's open for six. Big touchdown for the tight end. And no, this is not deja vu. Milrow is back for a second time. Georgia stalled out. Alabama drove right down the field. First and goal, Milrow. Read option, up the middle, touchdown. They are doing it here in a big way in Antarctica. There's not even really a point right now for Georgia to use their cold spell ability. They're getting destroyed. Alabama in this game has 19 more first downs than the Bulldogs. With just a few minutes left in this one, Carson Beck looking for anything at all. He's had a horrific game, three picks. That's what I was about expecting in the Antarctica weather, so it's impressing me that Milrow and Ewers are doing so good. And that's the final. The score remained the same. Alabama handled it. Not often you see this, but Georgia a one and done in college football imperialism. Spinning the wheel to determine who goes next, the LSU Tigers are going to have their crack at it. Let's send the Tigers to the right and down a little. Down into the right a little means Alabama's back on the clock. What Alabama is doing is impressive. This time in a position to score, Miller just takes off. First and goal. They're about to score again on LSU. 40 rushes, 40 passes. Alabama once again showing why they are a dominant force, and that's a big touchdown. Heavy snow, freezing temperatures, no big deal here as Daniels just throws a awful pass. That's picked. But the way Alabama is rolling right now, who can stop this team? Third and inches, just a simple handoff. That'll do. Second and goal, receiver in motion, just another handoff and a stiff arm fighting forward. That almost was a touchdown. I feel like a touchdown here pretty much seals the game. Dan, he's passing. Oh my gosh, I thought he was going to run it, but Prentice does the rest. Jaden Daniels without his star offense alignment, Will Campbell moving down the field, seeing what he can do. It feels a little late in this one, but hey, funnier things happen. We'll see what happens here. That handoff was not really ideal. Fourth and four. This is massive. He's got no one across the middle. Alabama turns it over. LSU defense in the blistering cold was no match today for Alabama's offense, regardless of the stops here. All wraps now Milrow back-to-back -back impressive performances therefore LSU loses hold of their little island and Alabama's territory expands let's see if anyone else can go on a run and threaten Alabama's reign it's gonna fall back on the Longhorns this time the new kid on the block is gonna have to go up and up is right into Alabama's territory again Alabama getting tested for their third time in a row this game has been back and forth and it's the first time Alabama is back against the wall settling for a field goal attempt in the blistering cold and snow he He's got it. The Texas Longhorns are proving to be a formidable foe. And oh my goodness, a one-handed interception. What? That was insane. Can Alabama keep the momentum and get a first down? Oh no, it's fourth. Longhorns defense steps up. Can't even keep up. This game has changed on the blink of an eye. And Milrow just walks his way into the end zone. They have the lead now. Bama is up with five minutes to go. And oh no, Longhorns are imploding. They fumble in the ensuing drive. Milrow's got him in the goal line. Texas defense defense has to make the stop of a lifetime here. Can they hold Bama? No, they cannot. The Longhorns have decided to activate the cold spell ability, forcing Alabama to go with the second string defense. They are hoping the Longhorns get some gash plays here with the second string defense in. And so far, this play is proving to be a big one. Let's go. Wow. Jonathan Brooks stays up. Now that's how you flip the field. Quinn Ewers goes back to work, finds a man for a first down. I was going to say before that last gash play that Alabama's second string defense is probably still pretty good. One mission here for Texas to score six, and that's first and goal. This has to go through here or it's all over for Texas. Ewers looking for someone, anyone. He's 
got a man. No, it drops out. The second string defense holds, and Alabama's going to win. Wow, Alabama has been put to the test, and they have come through every single time so far. Texas put up a valiant fight, but unfortunately for them, they lose the land, and they lose Antarctica ground as Alabama has quite a big chunk. Who's going to be next? Will it possibly fall in Alabama's lap again? This time Vanderbilt is up. Can the Commodores shock the world? Let's find out. They're going to have to go up against the Mississippi State Bulldogs. It was a battle through the first couple quarters, but oh man, maybe it's going to be a battle again with that pick. Vanderbilt intercepts. Massive interception for the Commodores as they're down by two touchdowns with eight minutes left. And they turn the ball right back over to the Bulldogs. Mississippi State, third and 10, right back around midfield after that turnover off the back foot. Are you kidding me? Another turnover. It's been turned over back and forth like a tug of war. It's fourth down for Vanderbilt. They don't have to throw an int to turn it over. If they don't get the first down here, it's going to convert and they don't get it. Another turnover. Vanderbilt decides this is the time to use the cold spell ability, forcing Mississippi State to put in their second string defense. And look at that run. That's a big 13-yard gain. Maybe this will give the team the spark they need to score and hopefully get momentum on their side. But the defense for the Bulldogs gets a hold. Practically comes down to this play right here. It's a handoff draw up the middle. It works. Now Vandy gets into the hurry-up offense. Going to get a quick snap here, looking for a shot. Any receiver at all, he's going to scan. He's going to go over the middle. That's the running back once more. Swan drops back. Number five finds the quick slant, and that momentum from the tackle carried him to the first. Hurry-up offense and a fresh set of downs. He's going to find someone. He's going to go out. It looks like the receiver, Will Shepard, makes his 12th catch, but so far hasn't been enough to give his team the lead. And shout-out to you, Will Shepard. I see you out here making all these snags. He helped build our college football team when we DM'd college football players to build a squad, and he came through clutch. What is clutch, though, right now is Mississippi State's second-team defense as they're holding strong, and they complete the defensive stand. Turnover. Bulldogs win. Literally just victory formation here, and that's a wrap. Bulldogs survive another day. With that outcome, Vanderbilt is no more. Mississippi State continues their ride. With the remaining teams, we got Missouri is finally on the clock. Tigers looking for their first bit of action up and to the right a bit. And the team that borders them most directly in that direction is Auburn. So we got Missouri Auburn. Tiger v. Tiger action in this one. We'll get to see who is the superior Tiger team. Mizzou currently up by seven, but can't get the first down here. Auburn defense all over this one in the snow making the stand in the blink of an eye auburn scored and they're back to do it again they had the one trick wonder working third and goal auburn with the option play qb keeper he should have flicked it out more than likely he's stuffed fourth down despite a blank showing in the bottom right this is a third down opportunity for mizzou auburn gets the stop Mizzou down by three. They use the cold spell ability. Auburn has second team defense in and Cook is going to scramble with just four minutes left looking for a first down and a sustained drive here. Crucial third down here. Tight end in motion. It's an option once more. They love going to this play and Brady Cook gets just enough. Just about in field goal range here, but nothing is guaranteed with the snow that's falling down. Another option here. Cook not going to go anywhere this time. Tigers were not fooled. Jalen McLeod, the backup with a big play there and another huge play from the backup defender on the defensive line. That's going to be Cook on the ground in pain. Because of that, Tigers forced to go for three. This is tough. He nails it. It's all tied up. Auburn Tigers here with a big third down looming. They go for a big one. Not quite all what they needed. With just with just one minute, 40 seconds left, it's a Wildcat option play that scores a touchdown. Cody in the end zone, Tigers up. Despite the scoreboard being close, the Auburn Tigers have been four for 18 on third down conversions, whereas Mizzou is out gaining them in yards almost times two. This is it, fourth down, 45 seconds to go. He takes off to scramble and the defense holds just short and Mizzou is gonna walk out on top with a victory. Tiger v. Tiger, Mizzou is the superior one in this this matchup. Auburn safe travels back to the mainland. Mizzou, your time in Antarctica is not finished. Let's keep running that wheel back. We got the Razorbacks up next. These hogs going to go up into the left, and that's going to match them up toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Volunteers. Tennessee is on a mission here. Fourth quarter action, looking to score some more, already up by 15. Joe Milton and the Volunteers said, hold on now, let me cook. Arkansas was in it close in the beginning. He has all day, and when you have all day, that's easy touchdowns. Arkansas down in desperation mode with just a flop 
in a turnover here. Tennessee's getting the ball back. This game's pretty much wraps. Already up by 22 with just five minutes to go. Fourth down. Tennessee shows no mercy here. Slip screen. It was all covered up. And well, Arkansas is getting the ball back. I don't know if that means much. Razorbacks getting close to the red zone here. QB steps up, keeps it. Number one is going to go for a big run here. Bouncing off defenders. Big play. Now the Hogs are definitely in the red zone and looking to opportunize. Wow. Good catch. Despite throwing for 400 yards, somehow they're down by 22 points. But this panned off and six will at least help them get one step closer. But that last touchdown by Arkansas was all in vain because Tennessee here is calling game. And well, hold on now. Nah, who am I kidding? Arkansas really never stood a chance. Even with that turnover, fourth down here, he got it. Nope. Receiver dropped it. The cold, negative 20 degree chill too much. So Tennessee really not in jeopardy throughout this game. They're going to hold on and win. Congrats to Tennessee as they knock off Arkansas and continue the dream. Getting down to crunch time. Some teams are yet to play and one of those teams is the new guys, Oklahoma Sooners on the clock. Where will they go first? They're going to have to go to the left and look at those borders. Alabama is back to defend their honor on the gridiron. What is this? I see Oklahoma up by a touchdown third and 11. It's no good there. Alabama's getting the ball back, but we have a leader in the fourth. And really, Oklahoma defense can be credited right now holding Alabama to two for 10 on third down conversions. Not holding them there, but so far the story has been good defense. Maybe I spoke too soon as they're already at first and goal in a wide open touchdown. Let's tune in and see if the Sooners can keep their momentum going and that strike will get them past midfield. 27-27, read option. Gabriel keeps it and gets decked. And yes, I know Dylan Gabriel is an Oregon Duck this upcoming season. There wasn't an updated roster, but what a catch. Oh my goodness, Drake Stoops. But yeah, transfers guys are not all in here. That was an unbelievable catch that the Oklahoma receiver had while it was mid commentary, getting him to first and goal. Now second and goal, sending a tight end out wide. Let's see if he can drop back and pass and find him. That's a touchdown for Jaden Gibson, Oklahoma on top. The tide cannot be stopped on offense. It's a rare sight, I should say. And that fumble is an anomaly. If there was ever a time to make a mistake, it was not there. And if there's ever a time to capitalize, it's right now. Come on, Sooners. Sooners settling for three on the fourth down. He actually nailed it. Alabama with the cold spell ability since they're down by two possessions. They put in Sooners second team defense in. He can go nowhere. The second team defense for the Sooners coming up huge this drive. Bama is down by 10 and they're forced to punt. This is an upset in the brewing right now. This is crazy. Fourth down, Sooners have to punt, but they effectively burn all of Alabama's timeouts. This could be wraps. Hold the phone. Only 20 seconds later, Alabama is all the way down into the red zone and scores a touchdown. Oh my goodness, you gotta be kidding me. So the second string Sooner defense steps up, makes the play. The first string defense gets gashed and gives up a touchdown. That onside kick, no good there. What a hit stick, but that's gonna be game. The Sooners do the spectacular here, upsetting Alabama. Alabama was on a roll defending their honor for the fourth time. This time it proved to be too costly. Sooners step out of their shadow and down a big one there. And wow, what a game changer. Alabama was looking like a strong favorite in this one. Now it's anyone's game. Florida Gators up next. Let's see where the Gators got to go. And Oklahoma, there's a reason you don't see Gators swimming around Arctic cold waters, but maybe the Florida Gators are a different breed in this one. They're up by four, looking to upset Oklahoma. Florida Gators want to stand tall and make their statement. Big third down for both sides. It's a handoff. The Gators... Do not hold by a mere inches. Second 11 going across the middle. Brick hands. It's cold out there. I don't blame him. Third and 11. Who's going to be a hero? Is it going to come from the offense here for the Sooners? Is it going to come from defense? The defense says hello. And the Gators make a big pick. Gators has been a lot of ground and pound, but they do an option pass. Falls to the ground. It only took two minutes for the Gators to give up the I was about to say give up the lead, but they pick it off. Big turnover in the end zone. Defense makes two ginormous stands, and that first down will give them a little bit of room to breathe. Another important third down here with only five minutes left. He's going to sling one to the sideline. Contested play incomplete. Oh my gosh, it was a fumble on the handoff, and the Gators' defense comes up huge. With how big the defense is playing, it would be crazy not to see Florida win. Definitely can't discredit Oklahoma's defense as well as they're stepping up in big moments, but the turnovers have been costly. Florida statistically a lesser firepower of a team on offense, looking to get it done against a high-powered offense of Oklahoma. First and 10, handoff, the running back throws a stiff arm down. It's not going to go anywhere. Third and eight, big play looming here. 
15, looking to go anywhere. He couldn't find anyone. He's dropped for a massive sack, gets back up, gets sacked again. Number 29's already missed one field goal. Can he cash in? He does, up by seven. The Gators have a one-touchdown lead. Once again, the task falls into the defense's hands, and they make the stop. It's a fourth down coming up. So far this game, the Gators are cold-blooded, swimming well in frozen tundra waters, but that play is going to convert for the Sooners. Just a minute left. It's crunch time here. He's going to go for a big one. Defense was all over it. A minute left in this one. Sooners going for a deep one. No one home. Third down, what can they do? He's got a wide open man on the outside. First down, chains keep moving. Already into the red zone here, handoff. That's a gash play for another first. All they gotta do is cash in, handoff, sniffed out, Gator defense clamping down. Defense needs one more miraculous play to pull out of their belt, and it's not gonna happen. Touchdown Sooners. This one's gonna OT. Third and five, Gators start off with the ball here. It gets dropped, the Sooners sack him. They just gotta be as conservative as possible, not looking to turn it over and get as close to the end zone as possible. Game ending field goal, Sooners win, and they survive Florida's tenacious defense. For a second, it looked like the Gators were gonna walk away with it. For them, their journey ends for Oklahoma their story is one step closer towards world domination. Spinning the wheel of remaining SEC teams, we got the Kentucky Wildcats getting their first opportunity. The Wildcats are gonna have to go down and to the right a bit. And to me, that direction is more right than down, so it's gonna be a Kentucky-Tennessee matchup. Kentucky-Tennessee in a battle here, and the quarterback for Kentucky just tucks his head and runs down the sideline. He has got a gashing play all the way into the end zone. Wow, he is doing it all by himself this game. He has three rushing touchdowns already. Now third and goal, can they complete the drive with six? They cannot, oh man. Number six dropped the bag, he dropped his money. Man was wide open in the back of the end zone, so they settle for three and they get the three-point lead. Wildcats do eventually get a second chance here on offense, but the fourth down play is snuffed out and that's gonna be a Tennessee turnover. Tennessee is looking to get some luck of their own and that's a play that'll get the chains moving. Hand off to the running back, he is off to the races. Just about five minutes to go, Milton going to the end zone. He's got a wide open receiver that just stops and stands there. He just wanted to take in the sights and sounds. All Squirrel White had to do was move his legs past the end zone line, but Milton says, I'll do it myself. QB keeper, touchdown, Tennessee on top. Well, it's all up to Kentucky's defense here. Three minutes left. They need to stop Tennessee from driving down this field. And clearly that's not working very well for them. Half-pack screen. He's got some blockers in front of him. Touchdown, Volunteers. Down by two possessions. Kentucky uses the cold freeze ability, bringing in second team defense for Tennessee. Let's see if that pays off as he gets a monster reception. Barry on Brown with the acrobatic catch, going back to work across the middle. Got some space. They're starting to move. Leary throwing for almost 500 passing yards in the blistering cold. Kentucky currently in line to drop this one, but hats off to Leary, man. Almost 500 passing yards in three rushing touchdowns, 80 rushing yards. Fourth down, opting for the field goal to make it a one possession game. Now the field goal is good, down by eight. They need this onside recovery, but Tennessee is all over it. Vols need a first down handoff. It's nowhere. Kentucky did the dang thing, and with no timeouts, they're going to have an opportunity to drive down this field. Stuttering in the back of the end zone, dropping back on fourth and 10. It's no good. Turnover. Tennessee wins. What a back and forth offensive shootout. Heartbreaking for Kentucky fans, encouraging signs for volunteer fans. And then there were five. The Sooners are back up. Really making the Sooners work hard for this one today. They're going to have to go up into the right. That means we got Mississippi State, Oklahoma up next. Oklahoma trying to run away from Mississippi State in this one. The read option, 4-6, touchdown Sooners. Down by 18, all the way back into their own red zone, and they pitch it out to the running back. Big play. Keep in mind, Mississippi State still has the cold spell ability, and they run over that defender for touchdown. We all thought for for a second, this game had potential, but no. Oklahoma had other ideas. They just blew Mississippi State out the water, scoring literally every time they touched it. Wasn't even much of a drive or nothing. Just like that, Mississippi State in their run comes to an end. Oklahoma continues. A heavy favorite to take the continent. The Sooners still have the Volunteers, the Rebels, and the Tigers in their way. Let's see what the wheel chooses. It's Oklahoma back on deck. Face to the right. And in that direction is the Volunteers. Down by 17, it feels like Tennessee is not going to be the team that can put an end to the Sooners' reign as they keep padding it on, going for the end zone, first and goal. A touchdown here puts up the Sooners by a lot, and there it is. 
That's about 24 points now. Third and 19. The Volunteers need a big play here, a miracle, anything, and that is the opposite. That's a curse. On paper, Tennessee and Oklahoma pretty evenly matched up by college football revamp standards, so surprised to see such a blowout. And even though there's six minutes left, that is all she wrote up by 30 now. That's back-to-back -back games. The Sooners have dropped over 50 points, and this is getting ugly. Milton for pride, down by 31. Fourth down, can they convert? Nope. Unfortunately for Tennessee, their story comes to a close, but Oklahoma is this much closer to continental supremacy. Will Ole Miss or Mizzou swing in and get a dub, but Oklahoma is back to the test. If Oklahoma wins it all, they've really proved it by playing so many games. Down into the right, well, Ole Miss is up first. Ole Miss looking to take their shot at the crown down by four with four and a half minutes to go. That play's going nowhere. Can Dart and the Rebels dial up the right play here? They need a first down conversion. Dumping it out. That looks like it's going to get the room they need for the first. Jackson Dart having a rather pedestrian day here against the Sooner defense, but he can turn it all around with, uh, wow, that was scary. Almost picked off on that last one, but it's a third down. Looking for the first. That's going to do it. Nice play. Ole Miss keeping the dream alive, handing it off to a receiver there on that play only three yards the important thing is Ole Miss doesn't get too cute they just go for fundamental football once again I digress fundamental football is rather hard in the freezing cold but what a play there first and goal with two and a half minutes handoff up the middle falling forward touchdown the Rebels have a lead never count out Oklahoma we've seen them with their back against the wall many times and oh my goodness you can count them out now that pick six was huge my goodness Prince that pick six puts the Sooners behind the eight ball down by 10 points. They use the cold spell ability for the first time, I believe. You already know what that does to the opposing team's defense, giving the Sooners an advantage on this drive and this drive only and going for it all almost picked off. Sooners scrambling, looking for something to go their way as they've been steamrolling everyone else up to this point. Clock is ticking, 50 seconds to go. They got the man on the slant. He breaks free of the defender. The backup could not tackle him. That's first and goal. Last stop costed Oklahoma a timeout at the least. They're at the one. Can they cash in? Going for a quick slant. It's no good. Third and goal. Trying again. Dropping back. Going for his man. He's got it. That's a touchdown. Fourth passing touchdown this game for Dylan Gabriel in an onside kick. No good. Ole Miss should walk this one out. Ole Miss has done it. They have slain the Giant. Oklahoma has fallen, and Ole Miss is one game away from continental victory. Oh, how the turntables have turned. Ole Miss breaks free of their cage and makes a statement in their debut, knocking out the Sooners and claiming the most land. I don't even need to spin. It's an Ole Miss-Mizzou showdown for Antarctica. Everything is on the line in this game. The SEC and Antarctica will run through the victor here. Man, oh man, Ole Miss is on a roll right now, up by 25. I think Mizzou is not going to have enough in the tank here with just nine minutes to go. I think no matter what they do, ability or not, it's all in vain as Ole Miss has been too much. First in goal, read option, Cook looking to keep this one itself, sheds the defender, that's six, but it is a little too late in my opinion. Jackson, Dart, and the Rebels taking precious time off the clock. It's third and eight, going for it all, and they've got it. Touchdown, that is a dagger and a dagger in the snow nonetheless. Instead of a dagger dagger, I guess you could say it was an icicle dagger. Haha. <laughs> but hold on now. Mizzou's trying to tell me something here. They want back in this game. They're looking to cash in, hand off up the middle. That extra push was all he needed. Touchdown, Mizzou. Wow. Okay. Okay. We got a game. Oh my goodness here. Brady Cook and the Tigers driving down the field, going for a big one. He's got it. Touchdown with a minute 40. They have become a comeback team. I'm literally this close from about eating every word I said and dart finishes it off, presumably with that first down. Wow. Rebel fans can breathe a sigh of relief, but Mizzou gave one heck of a fight. That is going to be the ball game, but Tigers give everyone a scare. And as the final seconds dwindled in that game, it is official. Mizzou is no more. Old Miss has claimed Antarctica and will represent the SEC in the global tour for world domination. Additionally, since Ole Miss won two games to conquer Antarctica, that means they get to steal two players from any team in the SEC. The journey for college football global imperialism continues in Europe. It all started in Antarctica. It sets the stage for global imperialism. We are jumping into Europe, a continent where kings and queens still exist. So that sounded like a fitting theme to cook up for today's imperialism challenges.
matches exclusive to Europe. We will have to play at a neutral site and we will have to spin a King's Decree wheel. We will spin this wheel before each game and essentially we have to obey what the King says. There are more than 12 decrees in the wheel that will add a fun twist in gameplay throughout this conquest for Europe. This is how Europe was randomly broken apart for the Mountain West and Pack 2. Let's determine who makes the first move in the battle for Europe. It looks like it's going to be the Air Force Falcons. Air Force is going to have to head to the right. Therefore, we're kicking off Europe with a bang Air Force versus Utah State. Air Force practically in and around Turkey, whereas Utah State is in that Georgia, Southern Russia, partly Ukraine area. But wait, how could we forget the King's Decree wheel? Both teams are going to have to endure this game with the worst quarterback in their death chart. So for Air Force, they're losing out on a 93 speed quarterback, and we're going to have to put in Britain. And with 68 overall freshman quarterback for Utah State, I think this is going to be a much more noticeable difference for this team. Taking a look at Hillstead, the Utah State third string quarterback, he's not doing as well as the Air Force guy and almost throws another pick there. The reason why I think Air Force is still managing to do well is because of this option run first football. Down by 16, they're just going with a handoff draw on third and six, Air Force all over that. The defense swarming. Fourth quarter football, honestly, it's kind of stalling out, but this is what the King wanted. He asked for the worst quarterback to start this game and play. With just three minutes to go, let's hope for some action, it taken off, but going nowhere, sacked for a loss. And Ramsey, who just dropped this quarterback on that last one, has three sacks on the day. The Utah State quarterback has attempted 60 passes today, and he's not going to get the 61st pass off as he's dropped. My man has about a 33 passing percentage, and he's going to complete here, but it's going to be far too short. Air Force dwindles the remaining time left, and that's a big dub for the Falcons, who actually had a decent game from Ben Britton. They're going to move on to the next step and Utah State has met their end. So with Utah State falling off the map, Air Force continuing their expansion here in Europe. A lot of wild and wacky challenges and a lot of fun. So strap in. Next team on the block, it's going to be the Hawaii Warriors. These guys got to go down south. Funny enough, Hawaii is on an island, but it's not Hawaii. It's the United Kingdom and that's their starting place for imperialism and they're headed south to play the Rams. But hold up now, what's the King got to say about today's game. It looks like he wants Hawaii to play in heavy precipitation. So I hope the Rams and the Warriors are ready. And so by decree of the King, it's heavy rain outside. So that's a perfect time to gather the teams together and let's play football. For a team with 67 overall, according to College Football Revamped, they're doing awfully well here against the Rams. The Rainbow Warriors are up big. And you know what? I might have misspoke. I think Braden's stat line just popped up five interceptions. It's definitely the defense for Hawaii we got to credit as they just force another fumble. It's the rainy conditions, I'm telling you. Second and 15, Rams quarterback dropping back. He's going towards the end zone. He's got a man, but he's going to be short. Shout out Torrey Horton. He made an appearance in one of my last DM videos I made where college football players built the team. Fourth and five, literally down by 27 points, 24 points. Well, now it's like, what, 18? But still, it's, man, it's a long way to come back. I know Hawaii's tropical and all, but did they really get this much rain to know how to play football really well in the rain? Chewing some of that precious clock, dropping back to pass on third and eight. He gets decked. The 13th attempt in the red zone today for the Warriors. And they are still slinging the rock. Who cares about any mercy rules here? Nothing. No friendliness. Braden set up with a lot of good opportunities from his defense. He's thrown for 380 yards and four touchdown passes. Can he cash in for his fifth TD pass? Not quite. Rams playing for pride, fourth down, dropping it off to Torrey Horton. He's got some space and he'll get the first down. Hurry up offense, dropping back. He just steps up to scramble, gets a little bit of a block there, sheds through. What a run by the QB. Just under two minutes, they're gonna hand it off, try to cash in. It's not gonna work. Wasting so much time in the process. These guys gotta score three times and there's only a minute and 30 left. He can't even get in there. Maybe the fourth time is a charm. It's a read option, QB will do it himself. All in vain, however, as Hawaii ices out the game, winning by 10. Braden Shager had a game. Hawaii's moving on. No longer confined just to the United Kingdom island. They're gonna be taking over some France and Italy territory too. Let's see who's up next. It looks like... Air Force gets the nod again. Already expanded territory one time. They're going to have to try again up north. To me, that means Washington State is the most likely opponent here as the Pac-2 team is going to have to face the Falcons. Before we jump into the game, let's find out what the King wants to happen. The fastest players must start and move to the top of the depth chart. Speed is the name of the game in this one, even at the cost of overall points. As you can see, Air Force receivers are actually led by now two of their lowest overalls. Doesn't hurt to have a 93 speed quarter 
quarterback at the top. For Washington State, however, this is a shakeup as Emmett Brown is now the starting quarterback. And man, these Cougar receivers have some speed with 90 in the top three. With a need for speed, this is a low scoring affair. Air Force just gets stopped there behind the line. Instead, wow, they settle for a big field goal. Does he have the leg off the post? Man, how unfortunate. A missed field goal costed them the opportunity to take the lead, but on third and 16, just gonna dump off a slip screen, really going nowhere. Cougars defense is there. Because of the speed decree, Washington State forced to go to the third string quarterback. It's not really working too well. Big third down here. Can the Cougars get some cushion? It looks like they're just gonna hand it off and punt, and the Falcons will now get a crack. At it. I can see why this has been a low scoring affair as no one is convincingly stepping up for a big play and hey Kate Harris nice catch they gave the Falcons a first down and they're gonna look to choose some clock and get themselves into a good field goal range lining up in a option like formation dropping back to pass however something the Falcons don't do too often but it worked there he third down here they're only three for 14 on third down conversions throughout the game tight end in motion number eight looking for something you just can't take a sack no way so instead of a field goal attempt it's a fourth down the cougar defense stepped up big and they step up again it's their ball with a minute to go emmett brown and the cougars just handing it off looking to take the clock all the way down and kick a field goal and instead the imperialism or the ai or whatever it was forces the clock to go out cougars just choked a golden opportunity man oh man talk about poor clock management here washington state starts with the ball in overtime air force falcons defense steps up third and 15 here it's up to emmett brown to get it done and oh man this defense defense is absolutely lights out forced to take a giant field goal attempt in overtime it's good once again both teams really came to play defense offense not so much but what a strike unfortunately fourth down for the falcons yep and it looks like they're gonna settle for three it's a chip shot he's got it it's going double ot third and six running back in motion it's a screen out to the receiver he's got some space he's going down the sideline they're almost into the end zone goal line area can zachary put the falcons on his back that handoff got a big chunk if you need a third down conversion this is the time going for the plunge and that was a odd route brother are you kidding me falcons are literally inches away from scoring the touchdown honestly i'd go for it but hey the ai is going to take their three it's good third and 20 washington state needs some yards back or anything this sack is an absolute no-go you could not have had that this ramsey dude on the air force defense has three sacks again in this game he did that in the first one fourth down it's a turnover big catch in completion but that's game air force wins against the cougars double overtime and honestly the cougars could have kicked the field goal or something to win it in regulation but hey uh they chose poor clock management air force got it done this is how we're shaping up unfortunate end for the cougars the next team is the other pack two team the oregon state beavers getting tested here beaver nation going down to the right a little bit king's decree they're looking for a second string defense in this one fourth quarter action it's a little odd to me that was second string defense and it wasn't more of an offensive shootout for either team honestly that's what i was expecting with the King's decree to go with second string defense. And let's see on third and eight, if Fresno State can get an opportunity and oh my goodness, second string Beavers all over him. Looks like Fresno State's second string defense is getting the job done today as they're gonna hold Oregon State on their drive to a fourth down. Beavers down by eight. They need this in a big way, going across his body. Good defense. DJ getting A's running back in motion, read option. He's got it himself. Converts on the fourth down, touchdown. There are still a couple transfers on this roster, but uh, that's the nature of the transfer portal. 21 apiece, Fresno State looking to respond on the other side of the football second string defender big stop that stop forces fresno state to punt this one back third and eight in their own end zone and that screen was going nowhere just under three minutes it's crunch time time for a team to step up and make a big play and that option for the first down is a good start for the bulldogs will the mountain west continue to represent or will a pack two team step up it looks like the bulldogs with a big run there into field goal position cougars went down the last one the beavers in jeopardy in this one and wow quarterback got annihilated mikey Keene's gonna be feeling it and he's dropping back to pass he's got a wide open tight end touchdown bulldog game on the line dj do you have something from your back pocket oh my goodness he escapes the first sack but the second one is too much fresno state forcing oregon state to burn all their timeouts and that first down conversion is wrap wow this was honestly the last thing i was expecting in imperialism i did not expect pack two teams to get eliminated in both their first games i mean cougars got a little bit hosed i get that oregon state got defeated fair and square so the pack two got an invite but they could not capitalize beavers the final team to go 
Fresno State has control over that side of Russia. Going ahead and giving another spin to the wheel of teams, the UNIV Rebels on their own island up in Iceland. These guys have to go down and to the left a bit, which at that trajectory from Iceland looks like no one, but honestly, the team that's furthest south into the left is Boise State. So this is going to be a Rebels Broncos matchup. This matchup, it has to be a longer game, 15 minute quarters. So it's going to be realistic. Both teams with 350 yards a piece. The King didn't want any funny business for this one, just a longer game because he is all invested in a UNLV Boise State Bronco matchup. UNLV taking their time trying to chew some clock already. That's that's odd. Um, there's still a lot of time left in this one, but they're going to drop back, getting close to the red zone, find a quick man there for three. It's first and goal, back to the option play. He actually flicks it out to the running back on the speed option. It was a triple option to be technical, and he got it. Impressive performance there from UNLV to get down the field. Boise State, on the other hand, that was dangerous. Third and inches on this play. It is crucial they get it, and it's a triple option. I think he got that one yard. Deja vu another third and inches this time it's stuffed rebels miss a chip shot field goal leaving the broncos in this one with a chance to get a touchdown for the lead on fourth down the broncos going for it because the defense for unlv has been super strong but not strong enough on that connection to billy bowens malachi nelson the top quarterback from his class a couple of years ago the redshirt freshman for the Broncos, big run. Under five minutes to go. It's a handoff. It looks like Dubar. Genty, is he hurt? Let's see if the Broncos can finish the drive. Back to Dubar. He's got a touchdown. They're going to have the lead. Rebels go three and out on the following drive, punting it back to Boise. UNLV just down to one timeout. This is a big third down. They get the stop. They choose to use the final timeout, and it's up to this big field goal. Yep, he got it. So now it's a six-point difference. What will Jordan and the Rebels do? Quick slant. They're just short. Fourth and one. Of course, we knew they were going for it the game is on the line after all so he has to convert right here it's a read option and he's got it with a mean stiff arm that last run was personal and he's gonna drop back and find his man and that hit stick was a little personal too all the rebels gotta do in 50 seconds is drive down this field score a touchdown and get the extra point and they win i definitely think there's time and there's definitely a possibility this becomes a reality and just kidding i'll take back my words right there as boise state dagger pick jalen clark sealed it with a massive Massive pick, and that is a W for the Boise State Broncos. Their conquest for Europe continues. So I wasn't really sure how to show the expansion of land here, so I created a clone and put Boise State's logo over Iceland. The battle for Europe is moving right along. We got the Wolf Pack on deck. These guys are gonna have to go up north, and it looks like Nevada's heading up towards the Sweden area to face Wyoming. Let's figure out what the challenge for this game is, and it's gonna be the tallest players have to start the top of the depth chart, no matter the overall. Tallest quarterback, check. Tallest running back, only at six foot, check. Two six four receivers, check. Six foot one, six foot top two corners. That was Nevada. This is Wyoming. I'm telling you right now, both teams got hosed. If you didn't know, size does not mean talent. Size definitely does not translate to talent every single time. And uh, Nevada is making better use of their lemons. The big running back here for Nevada has 31 carries, 117 yards. And that might've been just his last carry of the game. Shane and the Wolf Pack did what they had to do today, 31, 12. And it's a whole lot of ugly on Wyoming's side as they've only mustered up four field goals and nothing going here in the fourth quarter. Under three minutes, Wyoming's content with chewing clock, I guess. At least you get to check out what a big and tall Wyoming team looks like. Evan is a 6'5 quarterback out here for Wyoming, number 17, pretty much Josh Allen size and Josh Allen number. If Wyoming won the continent of Europe and had their chance at campus legends, I think Josh Allen would have been a good bet. Two minutes to go, quick pass there, just no one in the vicinity. My Salona Beach Sponges had a chance to play Savota and the, the Cowboys, and he wasn't impressive either. So Nevada doing what they have to do. Fourth and 12, let's see what Josh Allen Jr. can do. Just eat sacks, okay, pause. Well, the King wanted to see tall guys take the field today, and... Honestly, nothing too exciting here. Nevada just grinded one out. Wyoming, a one and done. Unfortunate for the Cowboys, but the Wolf Pack continues to stay hungry. Looks like the San Jose Spartans get their first crack. These guys are gonna have to go down south. Down south is against the New Mexico Lobos. Little Lobos Spartans action, why the heck not? Let's see what they have to do. It's just a normal game. Hold the line, this game is not even fair. 48 to seven in the fourth quarter and just picked off. This could be a pick six. This is out of hand. Are you kidding me? San Jose State pads it on 55-7. 
Have you ever seen an imperialism blow it like this? Are you planning on taking the New Mexico Lobos to college football glory when the new game comes out? Is this your first dynasty to rebuild? The heck, they need help. First in goal, but who the heck cares? You're getting absolutely embarrassed by the San Jose State Spartans, and I just have not seen a blown out like this in imperialism. It looks like we gotta watch out for San Jose State. They might mean business and make a run for Europe. Or on the contrary, they might come back crashing to earth if they play another opponent not named Lobos. Fourth in goal, scholarship on the line. He does throw a touchdown, surprisingly. Looking in live here on San Jose State, this is the second string offense out to play. Third and 14, honestly not bad getting this far, and they're going to take a deep shot. Oh my goodness, he's wide open. Oh my goodness. That, my friends, was Jay Butterfield, the backup quarterback, uncorking one. Now 61-14, Lobos looking to respond. What a game. This is all just for pride and wow, sack. You know you're down horrendous when the backup defensive end has two sacks today. Nothing at all to see in this one. San Jose State obliterated the Lobos and Cordero here, five total touchdowns, a efficiently easy game. Lobos did not even stand a chance. It was never in doubt. It is crunch time in imperialism for Europe. Fresno State's back on the clock. Looking to go to the north. Most directly bordering them to the north is San Jose State, so it's going to be an actual test for the Spartans. Last game, they had a normal game. This game, they're going to have to go once more with the worst quarterback on their depth chart. Fresno State relying on freshman quarterback Joshua Wood. San Jose State also has a redshirt freshman that's a 72 overall. Both teams relying on freshman quarterback, their third stringers, and the Spartans are up by one. Big play here. Connection number 16, pushing for the end zone, one yard short. Tyler Voss, 230 yards, three touchdowns against the top tier Fresno State defense in the Mountain West. This is an impressive performance from the young gun. Literally just one yard away. I think they should hand the ball off, let their running back cook, but no, they want to pass. What are we doing? Once again, I want to state here, we're just one yard short, San Jose State, and he tucks it and keeps it. He scores. I gotta say, the King's decree wheel always keeps us on our toes here. It's pretty fun to see third string quarterbacks get a crack for their team. In this case, Joshua Wood and Voss are both freshman quarterbacks looking to make a difference. Fourth and one smack dab at midfield. He slings one across and he's got his man. What a find. Wood is not having the best game on paper, but he can wipe that clean with a big fourth quarter performance. And no time like the present to step up on fourth and six across the middle. It's short. Final set seconds tick off in victory formation the spartans win their second game this time defeating the fresno state bulldogs so it looks like that 61 point performance was not a fluke against the lobos this team is legit they're hot they are a threat bulldogs were the aggressor it didn't pay off san jose state in control of a good chunk of land getting closer and closer to determining who will be champion of Europe. Wolfpack, you're up. Nevada is going to have to go to the right and up a bit. Our map's a little funky, but the team that borders them the most to the right is actually Air Force. Wolfpack, Falcons in this one, it's going to come down to a normal game. Both teams on paper were 75 overall, according to Revamped, and the Wolfpack are proving to be better in this one so far. Not often do you see Air Force getting blown out, but they're down by 18 and about to give up some more points. Second and goal, handoff. Dollars gets his fourth rushing touchdown of the day. Man was on a mission. Falcons designed to be an option type team, controlling the clock, controlling the tempo, not good from playing from behind. If you got Air Force in a position to throw almost every down, that means you've done something right on the other side. Fourth and 13, it's a big play pending here, going for it all to the end zone, intercepted. Yeah, absolutely blanketed back there, no chance. With just a minute and 15 seconds to go, another handoff, it's fourth down, but they're down by 25, so the Falcons stand no chance in this one. G to the G. That running back today put on a performance. Sean Dollars over 200 yards. I do want to say the Falcons had a nice little run, but Nevada nonetheless has got pretty much a full strip of Europe from north to south. The only team we haven't seen yet who's been just hiding away is the Aztecs, and they're still going to hide away. Boise State up next. The Broncos need to go to the right and down. In practically every angle from Iceland or down in Spain, it looks like Hawaii, Boise State. As per usual, we'll check in and see what the King wants for this game, and oh man, we haven't landed on this one yet. Out of position quarterback. Talk about a game changer. You better hope to have a stud athlete on your roster. Look at Franklin Jones. 
Johnson Jr. here. He's our best out of position quarterback for Boise State. 50 overall, 88 speed, 94 excel, and then tack on 80 throw power and 67 throw accuracy. The freshman free safety must have played high school quarterback. Similar situation here. Peter Manuma is the best out of position quarterback. 51 overall, 84 speed, 86 excel, 74 throw power, and 70 accuracy. You're kidding me. I didn't expect to see any points scored in this game. It's 31-10 in the fourth quarter. Free safety Johnson Jr. needs to get to work if he wants to get the Broncos back in this one. Franklin has 228 passing yards, one touchdown pass, one int, and he's got a dime there and he dropped it last second. Defense was all over it. 10 points is a bit reasonable for a out of position quarterback, but what in the world is Hawaii doing? The Hawaii strong safety at quarterback here. Second down, he delivers a screen to the running back, and that's a big play. First down, past midfield. Up by three touchdowns. They're really in the driver's seat as he steps up to just carry it himself. Seven-yard scramble. Manuma, the dual threat strong safety back here, just runs over the defender, but he's short anyway. I must admit, this is actually a lot more entertaining than I thought it was going to be putting in out-of-position quarterbacks. Manuma and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors are on a mission this drive, driving all the way down the field, second and goal. Third and goal, just a read option play. Hawaii's on the board again. Town by four touchdowns, really just playing for pride. He slings one out. What a ball. You can definitely tell Franklin's got a little bit of zip on his passes as he's going to throw a touchdown pass with three minutes to go. It really doesn't matter because Manuma's back in the red zone looking to score again for Hawaii. If I had to guess which quarterback was better in high school, my money's on Manuma based on this game alone. What a game from the Warriors. Manuma, the strong safety, has come in and upset Boise State. I can't believe out of position quarterbacks had this much firepower in the tank. 38 points. And why don't you go ahead and give him player of the game, Peter Manuma? I didn't even know he was like that. 478 yards. Are you kidding me? Jot this down as a mental note. Have you ever seen a strong safety have a better performance at quarterback? Franklin Johnson, the free safety from Boise State, honestly a respectable 296 and two. I'm not gonna lie, that popped off. Hawaii with an out of position quarterback went insano mode. That's just how the cookie crumbled for Boise State. And now the Aztecs finally get their first chance. Aztecs going to be competing to the left and up. That direction of the arrow puts them up against San Jose State. Let's find out what the key King wants to see. He wants to see the slowest players start. Aztecs roster equipped with the slowest guys and 48 speed for the quarterback. Yikes. At 65 speed, we'll see Jay Butterfield again. To me, it looked like Jay Butterfield and the Spartans were a strong contender, I guess, until they met the Aztecs. Because the Aztecs in their 48 speed quarterback are actually putting in work despite that sack. And with just under six minutes to go, they're getting down to the red zone again and about to strike. We see this all the time in imperialism as the 48 speed quarterback takes off for a touchdown. The read option worked. The slow speed, no problemo. And if you couldn't tell from those couple of plays, Jay Butterfield has not looked too buttery out there today. And yeah, this is deja vu, I'm sure. Fourth and five, I didn't replay the same play. The game's over with no time left and they're just giving up. Aztecs cruise to victory. It wasn't much of an issue here, even with a slow player only depth chart type play. Both teams had to put their slowest guys in. Aztecs really lucked out in this one as they came alive at the right time, capitalizing when the moment mattered most. I'm going to keep it 100%. I didn't expect Hawaii, Nevada, and San Diego State to be the final three teams. Only fitting the Aztecs are getting challenged back to back. The team that owns the land down south is Nevada. So with an Aztecs, Nevada Wolfpack matchup looming, we're going to have to play under heavy precipitation. Just kidding. It's a longer game. I thought we were going to hit the other one. By King's decree, he declared this game should be longer 15 minute quarters so the Aztecs or the Wolfpack have to prove themselves fourth down he's got an incompletion oh no drop the bag Wolfpack up by 13 just about to score again as he bounces off the tackles into the red zone credit that man Sean Dollars another 190 yards on the ground second and goal looking to top off here read option it's six Aztecs have nothing mustered up on defense give the ball back to the Wolfpack who are already down here again Sean Dollars is a workhorse 47 carries already 211 yards the Aztecs just became the three and out kings this whole last quarter as Sean Dollars with that carry, his 53rd carry of the game, 
puts an end to this one. Unfortunately for Aztecs fans, they were put out of the contention for Europe. Nevada keeps it moving. Wolfpack have been fighting for their land and fight some more they will as they just knock out the Aztecs and it's the final two. Wolfpack, Hawaii, Rainbow Warriors, we can go straight to the King's Decree Wheel and figure out what the challenge will be today. And we get the one thing I don't think we've landed on yet, the swap. The top two receivers will play cornerback. The top two cornerbacks will play receiver. Talk about a final challenge with everything on the line. This decree is low-key like the Travis Hunter rule. You got to put your receivers at corner, corners at receiver. Top two receivers by overall is Pinoke and McBride. Top two corners, Cam Stone and Verdell Edwards. We're swapping those guys around. 41 overall in 40 overall corners. Honestly, not too shabby on receiving here. Cam Stone's a 63 overall. Verdell is 59. For the Wolfpack, it's Campbell and Bell that we're going to put at corner and Isaiah and KK to receiver 52 overall in 48 overall corners and 57 54 overall receivers everything on the line for the whole continent of Europe it has been fireworks out here mainly on Hawaii's side but with these backup corners in and receivers it's been insane and with those changes really the battle for the trenches is what remains the same as that's a touchdown pass was that one of the corners that last touchdown was by KK a cornerback out of position playing receiver that was insane as Hawaii's right down the field again it seems like quarterback Braden here is having no problem with his corners at receiver I expected stuff like that drops with how action-packed this game has been and with high stakes it could swing in the blink of an eye now can it swing 27 points worth that still be determined but Sean Dollar is doing his part six minutes to go Wolfpack trying to move quick and that's a touchdown third and massive for Hawaii here Nevada's defense is stepping up don't count them out quite yet as with three minutes it's left they're back into the end zone tight end could not hold on fourth and eight this is a big play pending and he gets decked Hawaii's defense stands. I want to hear and see what your favorite 99 overall campus legends from Hawaii should I bring into the team because they are making a run for global domination. It's actually insane to me. When I started the Mountain West Pac-2 imperialism, I didn't think Hawaii was going to take it all. Did you? Nevada seriously came alive in the end of this one and with no time left, they throw another touchdown to KK. The cornerback scores again, but Hawaii has a date with the globe as they're going to look to take everything in the playoffs. And it is official. Nevada is no more. Hawaii has claimed Europe, and they will represent this continent in the global conquest for domination. That means for as many wins as Hawaii had this run, we get to steal that many players from the Mountain West and Pac-2 times two because of the group of five multiplier. In addition, voted by you, you get to tell me what 99 overall campus legends should we create to add to the roster. Soak in this map, because so far we have two victors, Old Miss and Hawaii. College football imperialism is headed to Asia, and we have a unique host of challenges today to spice up the competition. Here are the challenges exclusive to the continent of Asia. Teams will have to play in the stadium that holds the most capacity since Asia has the world's most population. The ninja rule. Losing team in the fourth quarter gets to sabotage the opponent by taking out one of their players. Only catch is it can't be the QB, but anyone else is fair game. Prove it winning team has to play in longer games for each subsequent victory. A victor has already been crowned in Antarctica and Europe. So who's gonna come out on top in Asia? Remember the team that comes out on top in this continent gets to steal a player from other Big 12 schools for as many wins as they rack up. Spinning the wheel of Big 12 teams, don't forget it's a new look conference with all the additions, but it's gonna start with West Virginia. As commonplace in any imperialism, you spin the arrow to determine what direction West Virginia is headed. All right, all right, we got West Virginia playing Kansas to kick off the battle for Asia. Rose Bowl in 1973 had 106,000 fans come to the stadium, which was a postseason record. And since the stakes are high, it's global imperialism. We're playing here. Kansas, West Virginia on the big stage for Asia. I must admit the Jayhawks have been getting better year over year and it kind of pains me to say that. It's all fun and games and it only pains me because I'm a K-State alum. Truthfully though, I think it's good when competition is tough. It makes for a lot more exciting games. And speaking of tough competition right now, West Virginia is getting beaten by 13 points. They're punting it back in the fourth quarter so KU is in the driver's seat. West Virginia losing right now, choosing to hold on to the ninja ability. They're down by 13 but if they can get a stop, they want to use the ability when they're on offense. West Virginia's coach told me the plan is to sabotage Kobe Bryant, the top cornerback from KU, but 
I'm thinking they just need to get a stop here and have a chance to get the ball back. Third and goal, KU got West Virginia to burn all their timeouts and it doesn't even matter. Touchdown, Jayhawks. West Virginia sabotages the secondary of the Jayhawks, giving them a less experienced group. And let's see if Green can go deep and capitalize on it. It didn't matter. The first play after sabotage, they throw a pick. Dotson came down with it. It's safe to say that today was not West Virginia's day by any means. Jayhawks are going to cruise to victory. All over here, Jayhawks on top 23 to 3. So they're going to have to go and prove it next time they play. They're going to have to have a longer game. KU draws first blood in this one. West Virginia didn't have much of a chance. Unfortunately, someone has to fall first. That's just how imperialism goes. Next up, it's Cincinnati. Spinning the arrow, we got to go to the right and down a bit. Cincinnati, located in India, has to cross the sea and face TCU out of the Myanmar, Thailand area. 14 14, 14 all tied up frogs and bearcats going at it here and bearcats deliver a big blow that pushes tcu backwards leading to a giant field goal attempt and he's good costly penalties halted this drive so it's third and 22 he's just gonna have to let one rip and it's nowhere no man's land tcu holds to help with this drive cincinnati's head coach is called upon the ninja ability taking out josh newton just like that tcu's best corner is on the bench and cincinnati's hopeful that this will give them the momentum they need third and 13 is he going to convert right here he's going for a big one and he's got a man oh my goodness 30 yards to d wiggins it seemed like there was some sort of miscommunication out there in the secondary as jones steps up only gets nothing another big time third down here they need a first down try to get in the field goal range or something and that's gonna do red zone action strap in folks the imperialism madness is already upon us 30 seconds to go will cincinnati step up and be victorious good run honestly brilliant job from tcu's defense to still get the hold tie game fourth down that was briggs third sack of the day this is in ever so crucial he catches it and converts if the frogs want to keep things interesting they need to score right here right now and he's got a wide open receiver 24 24 double ot action here tcu going across the middle's got a guy that fourth down from the first round of OT coming back to haunt these guys a little bit because now look frogs have the lead Cincinnati has a chance to respond here and on second and 14 calling the QB keeper gotta do better than that in third and 11 it's two down territory you're going for two plays and that's a big one Ooh, pass interference on the offense but hey scrapping back 16 on that last play fourth and six this is manageable and he's got the conversion first down first in goal we're only in game two for the conquest for Asia and this has been madness it's all tied up Going to triple overtime. 31-31, triple OT. Who wants it more, Cincinnati or TCU? I am eager to see what happens. Now Cincinnati settles for the field goal. Bearcats defense determined to get a stop here. They want fourth down, and they're not going to get it first in 10 it has been a back and forth tug of war triple overtime dot to the corner third and two good catch that receiver jalen robinson's been stepping up here and on third and two just looking for anyone he's got it touchdown dylan Wright for the win it's officially in the books horn frog survive in triple overtime what a thriller of a game in just game two a brutal way for cincinnati to go out in tcu is now taking over India. The next team with a shot at imperialism glory is Texas Tech. Let's see where we're sending these guys off to. And boom, just like that little in-state Texas battle, Tech versus Baylor, but the stakes are much higher. It's for Asia. Traditionally, a Texas shootout game, Texas Tech, Baylor, it's 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Tech on a third and 11 here, winding down the clock, looking to get a conversion, and he's decked by the Baylor Bear. Baylor down by 10, wasting no time to deploy the ninja ability. Daydrian Taylor, their star safety, is now on the bench for Tech. Baylor's optimistic that taking a star safety out of the equation will open up the secondary. Two interceptions, it has not been a friendly performance. Well, here's a third down, a quick pass. What in the world? I don't think I've ever seen the AI do something like that. That's like when you spam click the receiver that you're trying to pass to as the you're snapping the ball fresh set of downs and it's first in goal can they score they can if texas tech can get a first down here though i think the game is over qb keeper it's fourth and he has a big leg heck i don't know you could have probably iced out this game if you got the first down but now baylor has a wide open shot 
at the crown going for the win. Shapin literally wasting no time. He's actually coming alive in the fourth quarter and finishes it off. No, out of bounds. This has been an offensive surge in the fourth quarter that was non-existent earlier going to the end zone. First and goal. So now it's a mad dash back to the line. Fourth and goal. You can't spike it. Time is ticking. They're just going to snap it quick. Can they get the touchdown? Looking for someone, anyone. He's got the tight end. No. Oh my goodness. In and out of the hands. Texas Tech holds on. The Red Ray Raiders survived the Baylor's scary comeback here. And look at the play of the game. The deflection at the end. That sealed it for the Raiders. My goodness, it was this close from him holding on to that ball and winning it for Baylor. That, my friends, was insane. Baylor is out of here. Texas Tech has the whole left side of Asia. Running it back on the wheel. It looks like U of A is up. Arizona Wildcats, new kid in town, has to go to the right and down. That's going to square him up against BYU. 10 to 9 ball game here. Arizona, BYU. I'll keep it a buck. I didn't expect BYU to be keeping it this close. BYU defense has done a pretty good job holding Arizona, and they even had a safety earlier in this one, as Arizona's defense now says, hey, it's my turn to get the stop. Second and eight, Noah and the Wildcats taking the BYU Cougars to through this this wind and grind clock game and they're going to do it again. Just kidding, because this time BYU's coach called the timeout, trying to save as much time as they can get back. And for this drive, BYU's deploying the ninja ability to take out Jacob Manu. This is BYU's moment to shine down by a touchdown. They got to get back. With one minute to go in the fourth here, it's a handoff. They get the first down and some. That's a big run up the middle. Here we go. Launching one on third and inches, just way over through him. Not going to lie, that felt a little unnecessary to just absolutely let one rip like that. But anyways, the QB keeper worked out. 20 seconds left, second and 10 back to the running back once more they don't got much time to waste around here eight seconds seven seconds third and three six five four sacked oh my goodness one timeout left came in clutch here because it's fourth and nine time has expired and that was not the right call with time expiring bruh BYU should have took their shot to the end zone instead Arizona holds on for the victory Tyler Loop a kicker get player of the game trust me you see things in imperialism that you've never seen before just like a kicker getting player of the game dwindling down some teams out there on the Asia map and it's gonna head to UCF next it's gonna be to the left and down which the team that borders the most in line with that is the Kansas State Wildcats. All right, UCF, K-State, UCF up by four. My cats are in danger, so we have to battle here, and we'll take a third down. Trust me, I'm an unbiased spectator here for imperialism purposes, but I'm always rooting for the cats. Being the stop there holds them to a field goal, which they make, so we're down by a touchdown. Fourth and inches, and really coach is telling them to punt. Most teams use the ninja ability on defense, but K-State's choosing to take out their top receiver. UCF's probably going to be running the ball more often than not just to kill clock but see when they drop back and pass they're hoping that having one less star receiver out there will help now k-state's all out of timeouts this is for all the marbles third and nine he's taking his shot he's got a man there's a flag hold on refs call pass interference on i think that was the, the offense so here we go k-state faithful this is your last chance to get down the field ben sinnett the recent draft pick tight end for k-state headed to the washington commanders will howard going deep he's got a man and he dropped it on the sideline 40 seconds left no timeouts it's do or die going for a massive play he's got his man oh my goodness is that philip brooks to the house it is come on man that was literally insane but ucf still has six seconds two timeouts they just need field goal range can UCF dial in some late game heroics here going across the middle he's got a man oh my gosh heroics with an emphasis they strike right back they said 66 yard touchdown for Brooks 43 and that was the dagger oh my goodness this is crazy imperialism is popping off right now big 12 the battle for Asia is sicko although it hurts me as a case stater I gotta say respect to UCF down go the Wildcats, unfortunately, but now Iowa State will have their chance. Spinning that arrow, we got Iowa State headed to the left. A little battle for the islands down here. So Iowa State quarterback curiously chewing clock here. It's fourth and nine. They're not even, oh, they get the snap off. I thought they weren't even going to get it off. So uh, big play. They do convert. Wow, he gets the hand across the line. Quarterback Rocco only able to muster up 69 yards today. Nice, but uh, 
not nice enough for the win. Interested to see if they can score some points here, but even if they do, I'm a little pessimistic about the outlook. Every extra play is just more seconds off the clock, so honestly, this is helping Utah out. Now, hold on now. We can't change the dial on this game because Rocco is somehow fourth quarter driving down this field. First and goal, needing two scores here, so he's going to try to get one right here, and wow, that was scary. Third and goal, sending the tight end outward. It's a read option. It looks like he's going to keep it himself in score. Brutal sequence of events. They missed the extra point. The onside kick recovered by Utah and just to top it off, running back going to the house. But now the Utah Utes can celebrate as they are one step closer to conquering Asia. Utah snags full control of the islands. Here we go once more. This time it looks like prime time. See you on the clock. Determining where the buffs will go. That will be CU versus KU. Adding two minutes on this one because KU's won one game already so they're going to have to go through a longer battle against the buffs. CU defense has stepped it up in this one, winning 13 to 3 over the Jayhawks. There's six minutes left. This is a third down. Will the Jayhawks convert running over one guy but stopped? Fourth down. That drive did not work out for KU, came away with no points, but Shadur Sanders and the Buffs are trying to tack it on. KU running out of time to come back, and this would be a real backbreaker if CU scores, and Shadur is going to score himself. Even with Travis Hunter neutralized, KU is not mustering up anything. KU's use of the ninja ability is probably the most impactful, taking out a star like Travis Hunter, but it's not mattering in this one. They're just not going anywhere. Colorado comes in and gets the dub decisively over KU, 27-3, to led by Shitter Sanders. Shitter Sanders and Travis Hunter can be a hard duo to go up against in imperialism. Both Kansas schools wiped off the map, and we're going right back to CU. Didn't waste much time here this time. They're going to be going shoulder to shoulder with Arizona State. Fourth quarter action, Sun Devils on the move, third and six, down by three touchdowns, so they needed that conversion. I understand things can change on the flip of a switch, just like this, touchdown. Sun Devils. We have to keep this momentum. And here we go. Sun Devil defense got him to third and 13. Smacks Shader Sanders and tackles the running back for loss. You already know another team using the ninja ability to sabotage Travis Hunter. The opponent's gonna sabotage your guy. That's just the nature of the beast. Just outside the red zone, a valiant effort here right now by the Sun Devils. And look at this. It's first and goal. No, it's a touchdown. He ran him over. Travis Hunter back on the field on offense, right? Because we sabotaged his game on defense. So he's able to play now and see you breaking free with a big pass. Arizona State in desperate need of this drive to stall out Sanders. It's going to stall out because no way he gets 20 yards here. Man, oh man, strap in. We are down by a touchdown in this one. Arizona State is moving. Arizona State, a basement team in the Pac-12 looking to do the impossible here against CU. If the Buffs blow a 21-point lead in the last five minutes of fourth quarter, I don't know what to say. I will lose my mind if they can complete the comeback because they're looking really good right now, making the right plays. Third and one, just need a couple yards here. They'll get more than that. Number nine holds on. Big catch. Sun Devils in the red zone. Hold on now. QB keeper. What is going on right now? Looking to complete this thing. It's first and goal. Trenton Borget, I think is how you pronounce it, is having the game of his life. And he finds his receiver out of bounds what really not sure what the coach said on the sidelines that's fired up the guys like this this is unbelievable some inspired football happening right now but we'll need one last push if arizona state's gonna get a touchdown and cu says wait a second we're still here we're still playing getting a little wild with it they're delivering the hit and it's 10 seconds left fourth and goal this is it and brother that was not the right pass and cu holds congratulations buffs you just survived a wacky and wild comeback from from the Sun Devils, so uh, onward the buffs go. Shitter Sanders did just enough. Another crazy game in the books. This time, CU survives, and they have the largest part of Asia. Definitely a lot of good teams left and a couple that are yet to play, that being Houston, one of them. Let's go see who they have to go up against. Houston, UCF. UCF knocked off the K-State Wildcats on a last second miracle, and they're looking to prove it here that they can hang with the Houston Cougars, and that... What a, what a shrug. What a just shrug him off, stiff arm to the face, touchdown. Looks like UCF showed they got a tough guy back here at quarterback and nowhere near anyone. Momentum has quickly shifted in UCF's favor. They come down and get a quick one here. So Houston looking to strike fast. First in goal, usually Houston's a good team that can keep up in a high scoring affair and they're tying it back up. Trying to keep the drive alive. He's going to go 
over the middle. That was dangerous. Somehow he came away with it. Are you serious? I thought that was picked. Third and 17, looking for the first. And that was like worst case scenario. Huge defensive stand by UCF. And now with under 20 seconds to go, it's really up to them to see if they want to come down this field and win. And a huge run by the quarterback. Massive, massive, massive 30-yard carry. And on just one play, they're pretty much in field goal range already, looking for some extra yards to do the trick. Any college kicker should be able to hit that routinely, and they do. That's the winner. UCF with a knack for the game winner. That's two wins for these guys, and they're right up there with CU with two wins. Can they keep it up? Houston, one and done in imperialism today, and UCF just continues to get stronger. Handful of teams remain, and it's going to go to Utah. Let's figure out where Utah has to go next. Based on the arrow, for looking straight up, Utah is going to have to go play Arizona. Both Arizona and Utah have won one game so far in the Imperialism Conquest, so someone's got to win their second game, and someone, unfortunately, is going to get knocked out with five seconds left here on the game clock. Let's see what Arizona can do. Up by six, handoff. That's a good run running their way all the way down to the red zone. It's going to be difficult if Arizona can't get the stop here. Oh my goodness. What a run by the quarterback. Big third down. Can he convert? Going across the middle. He got just enough. Utah dropping back. Going back again to the receiver, Mikey Matthews, first and goal. Two teams that used to be in the Pac-12, now in the Big 12. And number 16 keeps it with the read option. He's got a six of his own. Utah chooses to sabotage McMillan, their star receiver. It's a very unfortunate circumstance right now for Utah. As it's fourth and 20, you have to get a big play, and that was not enough. Arizona got the ball in really good position, and they go three and out, but a field goal would, in fact, be the dagger if he can nail it, and he does, so Arizona should win. Millen had 124 yards in two touchdowns before Utah was able to sabotage and take him out the game, so... Uh, unfortunately, a little too late all in all. Utah could not mount up the effort needed to win this game. Arizona is going to be a tough out for anyone that has to go up against these guys. Six teams remain spinning that wheel. It looks like Texas Tech is going to have another shot. And the Red Raiders have to go to the right and down. Only logical opponent that makes sense is UCF. Nine minute quarters really making UCF work for it. The cover is starting to be taken off of UCF. 23-7 Red Raiders exposing this group. And even with the 16 point lead they're already flying back to the line high tempo just trying to get more methodically marching all the way down into the red zone they're looking for some more points second and three dropping back to pass he gets a man across the middle first and goal hurrying up the troops to the line they want these points and they're keeping ucf on the field and making them exhausted that defense has had a long day and taj brooks just delivers the dagger third touchdown on the ground fourth and goal another handoff this time he scores ucf tried getting a little crafty with it here fourth and three yep couldn't complete the comeback not really close Tech gets the big W here. They're excited because their journey is one step closer to Asia. They want the continent bad. But Tech still has to go through four giants first to see if they can be the one on top. Spinning the wheel of remaining teams, Oklahoma State finally comes out of the dark, gets their first game. Who's it gonna be? Oklahoma State, CU. Has primetime met their match with Oklahoma State here? Up by seven, going for a big ball. He's got him, 80 down first and goal. Cowboys got Ollie Gordon, one of the best running backs in the nation. Just gonna be a read option there. QB says, I'll score, thank you very much. See you wasting no time taking out the Cowboys' best corner. They are hopeful that that ninja ability will come to help them because look who's out there. That's not Shadur Sanders. I think Sanders got hurt. Can the backup quarterback for CU score and get this thing interesting again? He fights, but it's short by inches. Primetime tells Ryan Staub to get back out there, snap this ball, make him proud, and Oklahoma State says no. You hate to see injuries, but literally for CU, their whole season, imperialism, everything comes down to Ryan Staub, the backup. Pass interference on the offense, it's going to be fourth and 19. And well, I'll be darned. CU says that's too far. We're throwing up the white flag. GG, Oklahoma State, you bested us. Third down, CU burning all their timeouts now, and yep, that first down, geez. First in goal handoff, it is a touchdown, Oklahoma State up by three touchdowns. Condolences to CU fans, that is not the outcome you like to see. 
You had a nice imperialism run, but Shadur Sanders went down early. So you're forced to depend on the backup. It didn't pay out. Yeah, I feel like I didn't credit Oklahoma State enough. I mean, Shadur Sanders doesn't play defense and Oklahoma State was able to score 31 points. So it was a really solid performance from these guys. Four teams remain. Let's spin the wheel. It looks like Texas Tech. Their conquest will continue to the right. And hey, it's Oklahoma State right back at it. Oklahoma State Cowboys down by a touchdown. Third down conversion. It's a first. Cowboys were able to neutralize the buffs with a little help there. And then Texas Tech is a tough opponent too. Two straight difficult matchups. But honestly, at this point in imperialism, every game is going to be tough as 88 stays in bounds and gets the first. That puts Alan Bowman over 400 passing yards. And he's got another connection to number eight and they're this close to scoring. First and goal for the Cowboys. They got a lot of options here, and they're just going to go right up the gut. Touchdown. Oklahoma State flips the field pretty quick and gets another shot here, but he gets destroyed by a big sack. That's going to make this kick about a 51-yarder. Does he have the leg? Yes, enough juice. Four minutes, 44 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Fours everywhere. Will Tech get a drive going? And on fourth down, their quarterback with four passing touchdowns decides to punt it back. Their faith in the defense paid off because they have the ball in the red zone, running back, running over guys. First and goal with the tempo here, dropping back to pass. He's going to go for it, and he's got the touchdown. Number one, Price gets the team back on top. Oklahoma State has like double the yards Texas Tech has. Actually over 600 today, yet they're losing by four. Ollie Gordon with the nice run, fresh set of downs, looking to go deep, going for a big one. He had a man and just overdid it. There has been a whole lot of offense, not as much defense to show for it today. Huge fourth down. They need this badly. And that was a rushed decision and turnover, brother. Game on the line. Texas Tech, can they convert? It looks like they have the space to do it. And that stop is going to be too late. Over 600 total yards was not enough for Oklahoma State. They fall to the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Tyler efficient, five touchdown passes for the guy. Final three coming into picture. It's Texas Tech, Arizona, and TCU. We have not heard from TCU in a while, so the wheel says let's hear from them now. Are they ready to go or are they a little bit cold waiting in the wings? Because they're going to have to go up against a red hot Texas Tech team. So I think TCU answered my question with an emphatic yes, they are ready despite that touchdown right there. They're killing these guys. Even longer quarters in this one because there's been a lot of need for Texas Tech to prove it. The more wins, the longer the games, and Tech looked unstoppable for a while, I guess until they met TCU. That pick they just had didn't do anything on offense. If TCU keeps playing like this, they'll be a real threat to win it all. These guys have literally had backups in like all quarter. So let's watch and see if the backups can get it done and get six of their own. And he had him. This backup is wildly inaccurate though. Field goal's a field goal, I guess. Texas Tech has only been three for 15 on third down conversions today. And that's a big reason why they're failing. When it's all said and done, the, when the bloodbath is all said and done, TCU comes out on top with 66 points. Chandler Morris, 425 yards, six touchdown passes insane in the membrane all rested up after their slumber tcu comes out in emphatic fashion for the win with style so tcu is going to go up against arizona in the grand finale here for asia winner of this game represents asia for world domination we have made it to the championship game for asia and tcu is down by eight and they get the first down here so that's going to help them continue this drive but you already know we turned up the game quarters to 15 minutes because it's the biggest stage. Someone's going to have to show that they are the real deal. Is it going to be TCU? Is it going to be Arizona? Both look pretty tough right now. TCU couldn't get the job done, so Noah and the Wildcats are going to drive. Which team is going to join the other two teams that are already victors of their respective continents? Either team, whether it's Arizona or Texas Christian, I think they'll be really strong plays in the global conquest for domination. Let's be real. TCU or Arizona is both going to steal Travis Hunter to their team if I had to bet. Big touchdown there from Arizona. So TCU is forced to drive and drive fast. So within just a couple minutes, the Frogs are also in their own goal line and score a touchdown as well. We got a shootout. Six minutes on the clock, third and seven for the Frogs. Can they convert? Arizona defense makes the big play. Third and three, looking to convert here. Arizona looking to pass. He's going to keep it. He's not going to go anywhere. So TCU might get the ball back. TCU targets sophomore Jacob Manu, 90 overall linebacker, and takes him out the game. In the championship game, you need all your stars on the field. And TCU needs to get a star player involved 
with a pass to no man's land. TCU looking at the danger zone here with only two minutes left. They needed this defensive stop. Now third and three, the running back's gonna take the carry and get stuffed. Clock ticking, the Frogs' hopes and dreams on the line. They just go with a halfback draw. That was a questionable call, coach. To be frank with you, I think TCU's coach sold it with that play call. That was a little ridiculous. And Arizona is able to finish out the rest of this game in victory formation. And there it is. You're looking at the Asia champion and it's the Arizona Wildcats. These guys are going to be strong going into the world tournament, and TCU unfortunately got close, but couldn't finish the dang thing. But on the contrary, oh, how sweet it is for the Arizona Wildcats. Here is a look at the global imperialism map at the end of Asia. We have Arizona representing in their continent, Hawaii representing from Europe, and Ole Miss from Antarctica. If you're soaking it up like I am, drop a like and hit that subscribe button. College football imperialism is headed south of America to South America. Home to the world's largest rainforest and river, college football is gonna look and feel just a bit different down here. To be victorious in South America, teams will need to play by a couple special rules that will be sure to keep gameplay spicy and keep teams on their toes. We will be taking the games to Miami as that's the southernmost point in college football. Teams will have to work their way up through natural progression, in particular, this is running back focused as every team will start with their third string running back. You have to win the game to unlock the second string running back and then win the next game to finally get access to the first string. Lastly, a game changer, the poison ball on the first fourth quarter touchdown. They have to lose that player for the rest of the game. Who's ready to get the party started? I know I am. Spinning the wheel of Big Ten teams. It's going to start off with Indiana. So the first battle starts with the Hoosiers. Hoosiers are going to have to go to the left and up a bit. And who borders them the most in that direction is the Ohio State University. Third string running back for Ohio State and third string running back for Indiana. Not sure if any of you held on to hope that Indiana would get into this game because I didn't have any hope. I'll tell you that much. Ohio State dotting them up. But you know the rules and so do I. Marvin Harrison caught the poison ball and he's off the team now. That is only for this game, however. So don't be too concerned. You'll see him back in the next. Third and 14 for the Hoosiers. They're down by a lot. I don't think we'll waste much time in this game as you already knew there wasn't much of a chance. Well, round one of imperialism on South America was rather predictable. Ohio State gets the win. And because of that win, they've quickly unlocked their second string running back, moving up the natural progression route. Purdue on the clock. Let's figure out where we're going to be headed. So to me, that means Nebraska rather than USC. Third string running back here for Nebraska, getting the carry and going nowhere. Down by 11. They were hoping to get a spark there from the running back and the defense for Purdue is too strong. Now, the funny part here for Purdue is that they have a receiver now at running back out there and they're slipping it out to the receiver. He's got good hands. Just can't get enough yards for the first. Nebraska needs to kick it up a gear here if they're trying to win this game and move closer to South America conquest. They will gladly take a penalty call that gives them a fresh set of downs as the quarterback just keeps it himself. What a big run. Okay, I missed the call, but the craziest thing just happened. Our third string running back for Nebraska just scored a touchdown. So he, in essence, got the poison ball and is out for the rest of the game. So I think that means a four string running back, in this case, cornerback with 90 speed takes his place. But that first down right there, honestly, just got them closer to sealing the fate. Two minutes to go. Card still slinging it, looking to get some insurance points. Third and four, if they can convert here, that spells good things, and they're short. There is an imposter among this Nebraska receiving core. A cornerback that's starting at running back is out there too. Hurrying up to the line, trying to save as much clock as possible. Fourth and eight. Here we go. All on the line. Nebraska going for a big one. Intercepted. Purdue comes away with the big play when it mattered most. And that was all she wrote in this one. Purdue advances. Nebraska's knocked out of here. Therefore, Nebraska's a one and done. And Purdue has unlocked access to their second string running back. Onward and upward from here. Next up, we got UW, the national championship runner-up. Will the Huskies get right when it comes down to South America? And Jish, we got fireworks already in this one. Washington, the Ohio State. Fourth quarter action, Ohio 
State going for it here on fourth down, and it's snuffed out by Washington. The Husky pack swarms all over him. Huge stop, down by a touchdown. We are only in game three of imperialism, but this is literally a championship caliber matchup in its own right. This team is filled with weapons as evident from the NFL draft. There's the third string running back getting a tote. Number 20, Tybo Rogers there in the read option. 85, the big tight end is loose all the way down to the one. A touchdown away from tying this one up. It is Tybo on the carry. The third stringer couldn't do it. Second and goal, speed option, panics dropped. Third and goal, Ohio State has one of the toughest defenses out there. Can they make the stop today? It looks like it. It's a double-edged sword here. Fourth and goal, you definitely want to score, but whoever scores, it's a poison ball. In this case, Tybo and no one is scoring. Ohio State turns it over. Third and 13 for the Buckeyes. Will this be the carry to get the first? So go ahead and give the Huskies another shot here with just about a minute 30 to go. Tybo's coming alive. This is a star-studded roster, no doubt about it, but is it enough to beat the Buckeyes? And what a throw. Penix Jr. to McMillan there on the run across his body. That was a sweet lefty pass right there, my friend. That was really good to see for the Huskies. Big third and goal right here. It's another draw. Tybo has not been efficient. Or sorry, that was fourth down. I didn't even realize. So I didn't even catch that. That was fourth down. They turned it over and that was game. The Buckeyes led by Kyle McCord, who's at Syracuse now. Uh, they are going to go on to the next step. Absolutely massive victory there from Ohio State, and they're the first team to unlock their first string running back. Husky fans, that was hard to watch, I'm sure, so I apologize. Scarlet Knights are headed down south. The Scarlet Knights are headed to the left, which, okay, I don't even know why I'm spinning. There's only one team that borders them, so we're going to play Wisconsin. Yikes, this is a scary sight indeed. 42-0, to Wisconsin up huge. There is not a lot to see here. Rutgers, honestly, just playing for pride at this point and not going too well this is more than likely a read option yeah speed option close enough touchdown so wait that's gavin the quarterback we have to bench him for the rest of the game can you tell it wasn't going to make a difference anyway badgers take this one decisively and yeah they're just getting warmed up it looks like seems like wisconsin's got the depth they need at running back now they've unlocked the second string and Rutgers are eliminated one game at a time out here and Wisconsin, however, is back in the limelight. Just like the last one, I'm not even going to spin the arrow. Look, there's only one way they can go, and it's up to Michigan State. Spartans third and six, looking for the first. They got it. But yeah, can you tell there isn't too much to celebrate here for the Spartans as they're down big again? Or I should be saying Wisconsin up big again. Three running backs in the backfield, all 85 plus. So it's kind of funny. It doesn't really make a difference here. And even with those good running backs, it clearly didn't make any difference in this game as Wisconsin is bodying these guys by four touchdowns. Antonio Gates Jr. with that last catch. So that was pretty cool to see. However, Wisconsin is just this good. Michigan State fans know they're eliminated from this imperialism. So let's try to at least get them a touchdown. Come on, guys. Hopefully this is the play right here you can hang your hat on as a Spartan fan. Rewind that and let's play it back. Hopefully this is the play you can hang your hat on. Fourth down. Can he do it? This is hysterical. Coach is literally calling timeouts here. It's third and goal. They do get the touchdown after all. Hauser to the house. And Hauser back home to Michigan as Wisconsin keeps the dream alive out here in South America. Tanner Mordecai, what a game. Okay, Wisconsin started at the bottom of the continent and slowly but surely make their way up. With that, Wisconsin has no restrictions anymore. Just got to watch out for the poison ball, sending the Lions to the south. And that arrow is pointing directly at Illinois. Illinois down by 11. However, they are in the red zone here and they're going to read option it, pass it back out to the third string running back who shakes a guy trying to make the Nittany Lions look like children. But Illinois is going to need a lot of help. And the second string running back did come in as a change of pace back and score. And because Reggie loves scored, he took the poison ball and he's off to the gulag. Penn State holding on to that three-point lead. Drew Aller is just going to step up and lose the ball. Big sack fumble. Illinois has just changed the game, flipped it on its head. Touchdown, big man. Love to see a big man touchdown. Randolph, absolute game wrecker right there. So Aller's forced to get to work and he needs to work quick. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a quarterback named Bo, so that means Aller got injured earlier in the game. Well, Illinois fans, this is your time to capitalize then because you don't get an opportunity quite like this, especially in imperialism. You definitely still got to be good if you're the backup quarterback at Penn State. Third and nine, looking for a play here to get all the yards back, and it's going to be fourth and short, but this is go for it territory. Nittany Lions fans, hold your breath. It's about to go down, and you get it. Penn State wants to fight and live another day, get Aller back, and oh, Bo, baby. 
all the way. Gonna do them like that, huh? Bo went ahead and popped off that last drive. Just a minute to go. It looks like a slip screen here on third and 12. Will that be enough? Leeway got really, really close. One yard to go. Will they get it? It's a read option in a flicks it out to number two. The running back picks up the rest. Folks, this game is not over yet. Illinois wants to score, and that is going to get them that much closer. What a dot. Five yards away from pay dirt. Can they muster up what they need? And is that an interception? No way. Able to kneel out the rest of the clock. Bo and the Penn State Nittany Lions came to town and did what they had to do. Now you should be able to get Drew Aller back in the next, I'd imagine. Man, so Illinois almost had it. The show must go on, and that show is headed back to Purdue. Already won their first challenge. The second challenge, however, is none other than Ohio State. Ohio State doing what they typically do, and that's winning. They're up by 13. Purdue trying to get back in this. Third and five. Does he have enough for the first? Yes, good play there. Needing two touchdowns. Going with the play action. He's got the big tight end, number 88. Buckeye defense looking to buck down here, and wow. Well, it all comes down to this, Boilermakers. Fourth and goal over the middle. He got so close, yet not quite enough. It shows just how costly it was not scoring a touchdown last drive, because look, it's first and goal. They got down here again, and a touchdown would have given the lead. It's like the definition of trying hard or doing the most, but it's just not coming up with the dub. Let me be quiet for one second. I might be eating my words here. They recover the onside kick and just have a huge strike down the sideline. And no, no, I was not going to watch an onside kick. I have never seen one actually successfully recover. Really? Okay, they're going to choose to chew clock rather than burn that last time out. That was odd. Third and six, five seconds left on the clock. He's going for a big play. He had a guy with a step, but it was really underthrown, so intercepted. Like I said, doing the most but not enough. Purdue literally did everything except get the dub and Ohio State walks away with a victory. I mean, look at Kyle McCord didn't do really anything. He got player of the game. Was a fun ride. Now Ohio State is just looking really strong. Will anyone be able to step in and save the continent from Ohio State's reign? Wisconsin will only land on Penn State or Ohio State. So if it's to the left, we'll go Penn State. If it's to the right, Oregon. Arrow says to the right. So that's going to be Oregon. Can someone explain to me what's going on here? Why is Wisconsin so good as Oregon is at first and goal, but they're down by 19. Wisconsin is just cracked in this simulation, but hey, Jordan James up the gut, touchdown Ducks. As soon as I said that, the Ducks are now back and looking for more points. Touchdown. Ducks are going back-to-back -back scores here. It all started with Jordan James scoring the first touchdown, eating the poison ball, getting sent to the gulag. Then Wisconsin goes three and out. Ducks score again. So we're back into a ball game here. It said Tanner Mordecai threw for five touchdown passes. Well, I don't know what the last couple drives have been for these guys as they've just given the Ducks a golden ticket to get right back in it. Newest quarterback for the Denver Broncos, Bo Nix, looking to make a statement. And yes, he found the running back, Noah Whittington, in their first and goal. Dude, I was just talking about how Wisconsin's always blowing people out, and the Ducks all of a sudden are back in it. That's stuff you can't make up. Now they're going to spike it and cost themselves a down. Talk about the stakes. Fourth and goal. Are you going to climb the Wisconsin mountain and beat these guys? No. Wisconsin steps up last second unbelievable. There goes that team again. Wisconsin wins. Oregon came all the way back, but couldn't finish at the last drive. Duck fans in pain as they're a one and done in this imperialism. Trust me, I feel you. My team was one and done in the Asia conquest. With the remaining teams, we're going to go with Minnesota. Sending the Golden Gophers to the right. To the right and up a bit is Ohio State, and these guys will not stop getting tested. They're going to have to prove their way all the way through the continent. Hey, Golden Gopher fans, how we feeling? 62-7. You hanging in there? This imperialism in this game, too, there's been a lot of decisive wins, and and it's making me think, what is the best conference in college football? I mean, I'm biased. I'm a Big 12 guy. And there were a lot of close matchups in imperialism. Let me know what you think in the comments section. But I mean, for Ohio State here in this game, they got all their backups and their mothers in the game right now. Like, what are we even doing out here? This is a blowout galore. And on this somber note from Minnesota fans... Uh, my condolences to you guys, our RIP. This was a scary sight to see in this game. Ohio State did not hold back whatsoever. Kyle McCord, even the transfer quarterback that left Ohio State, 
deal dealt up six touchdowns against the Gophers. What does that say about Minnesota, man? I'm not going to lie. I've lost count of how many games Ohio State's won to this point, so I'll just have to count it back at the end. Maryland has a chance to show what they got, and the Terrapins are going to have to go to the right. This is a South America first. Maryland, UCLA. Maryland got a chance to show the world what they could do, and UCLA stole the show. Third and nine for the Terps. They just want to get anything going as they haven't been able to do all game. Dropping back, Talia going across the middle. What a snag by Jashawn Jones. It is definitely far too late in this one though as there's just nothing going. Lie to, lot to with that drop on Talia in the last play. That man went first pick for defensive players in the draft this year. So it leads me to believe UCLA could stand their own potentially in this run for imperialism. First and goal, what are the Terps gonna do? They're gonna throw it out to the third string running back who just gets decked and fumbled it and that is why he's a third string folks seeing if talia can do anything special here with the remaining time last couple chances here with only 20 seconds left he's found a man first and goal well to me this is another case of a team that came back but started the comeback far too late yeah they scored that touchdown with five seconds in the game there was nothing else they could do so ucla logan Lioa, player of the game special teams two total touchdowns that's funny maryland gone ucla survives couple teams in here we're yet to see like uh, michigan for example but instead we see wisconsin again makes sense this is getting a little funny guys we've seen a lot of ohio state and wisconsin and that era wanted to see two powerhouses go at it as ohio state and wisconsin are set to square off wisconsin picked a bad time to go quietly because they have been killing people up to this point instead the other powerhouse will reign supreme as they're up by 18 let's not count out the badgers quite yet third and goal for tanner up the middle the running back scores touchdown both teams earned their first string running backs long ago because they've won many games and ohio state gets the ball back again not only did wisconsin score first they've lost their running back to the poison ball cord looking to finish it off and it is easy peasy badger fans let's celebrate the run that you guys had unfortunately ohio state is too much even in garbage time ohio state was padding it on i mean seriously 54 points like who's gonna stop that marvin harrison jr on the ground and through the air wisconsin just wanted to hang with the big boys but it wasn't right for them now ohio state's got brazil and all the way down to the southern coast cooking up the next one it's penn state back on deck many directions will point them to ohio state and yeah it did nittany lions buckeyes up next what do we have here what do we have here penn state nittany lions up by four and connecting on a big one across the middle. It looks like the Nittany Lions aren't satisfied as they're hurting up to the line. They want some tempo football. They want to get some additional points for insurance as Drew Aller's back in there healthy in this one and doing what he's got to do. This is the first time that anyone's really threatened Ohio State. But trust me, you're going to need to sustain this offense in the fourth quarter because Ohio State's always cooking up something. But we've talked enough about Ohio State in the last like six games or so. And oh my goodness, he picked that off. When your defense steps up, you have to return the favor on offense, and we don't. This time, Drew Aller and the boys are much more aggressive. They're not punting it back. They're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth and five, except they want to choose some clock first. Let's see what they can cook up here. They need the play to get the yards, and the slip screen is short. Only a minute left, so any scores here in this time of the game, it's going to be decisive. Big sack from Hakeem Beacon on that last one, and it looks like it's going to be a fourth down. As one would imagine, Buckeyes going for it on fourth down. Bad play call. It's turned over. This is not a drill. I repeat, not a drill. First down, that's going to cook this game out. Victory formation for the the Nittany Lions, the tables have turned and Ohio State, who's won like five games up to this point, is out of here. And as you can tell, they're celebrating like they just won the whole ship. Spread the news. Ohio State is no more in South America. And with that result, let's see who's next. USC. Trojans going to have to go down and to the left. And since it's left and down, not down or to the right, that makes me believe it's a USC-Michigan matchup. First time we're seeing Michigan or the Trojans. And since it's their first game, just like everyone else and how they had to do it, their third string running backs are in. Meaning for Michigan, no Blake Corum. That's going to be tough. JJ McCarthy has thrown four interceptions in this game, but he's looking to right all the wrongs. And he can do that in a big way if he can find a way into the end zone. Third and 11, halfback draw up the middle with the running back. That's a big run. First and goal, Wolverines with an option there. The keeper for Donovan Edwards. Touchdown. Now Donovan won't see the light a day again. Let's check in on how Caleb Williams and the Trojans are faring on third down. Couldn't get enough. Quick side note, these are not my ratings, but college football revamps ratings and I noticed Caleb Williams has a lower overall than JJ McCarthy. JJ's a 90 overall, Caleb Williams is 86. And so I, they're close, they're good. They're both great 
quarterbacks. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, realistically, there's a reason Caleb Williams went round one, pick one. I mean, he's got a lot of intangible talent. Need the touchdown. Three points will not do. And Caleb Williams has a play action wide open. Relique Brown for six. They're going to take the lead. With 47 seconds left, this extra point is good. They have a one point cushion. 40 seconds in this one. What is it going to be? Michigan still has all their timeouts. Opting to not use one oddly here. I mean, you have three of them. I don't know why you wouldn't start using them because they just killed like 10 seconds of clock and counting. Hello, JJ McCarthy, anyone there? Michigan, Wolverine, coaching staff, Harbaugh, anyone, someone come save this man. What is going on? Michigan fans, you've got to be beside yourself. Your team just sold you imperialism. I don't know what they're doing. They're smoking something that I don't know what's out there. They choose to snap it with no time left, and it's game. Michigan Wolverines one and done in South America imperialism. I don't know what the heck that was at the end. Well, okay then. Michigan is defeated. Imperialism is funny like this sometimes. There's no Michigan, Ohio State, no Oregon. So honestly, it's anyone's game still as we're going to head down to the left. Therefore, Iowa, USC up next. 17 apiece here for USC and the Hawkeyes in this defense is always known to be pretty good. Current problem for Iowa, though, is the offense when are we going to get this thing moving because a stellar defense can only keep you in the game for so long you need to get points at the end of the day and how did that just complete receiver in motion caleb williams here taking the snap on third and 16 did they got enough pass interference penalty declined fourth down yo wait a minute they declined it so they're gonna get a chance at a field goal would you have done that that puts a lot of trust in a practically non-existent offense here Cade having a rough day at the helm and he's throwing for about 40 percent completion but that's a big completion my my goodness did not expect to see him just come out and uncork that one now it's really up to the team are they trying to get the field goal or a touchdown to win it i say you go for the win gun empty here will the hawkeyes prevail he has a man and that's six six yards they still want the big six and maybe this is the play first and goal anyone gonna step up as a hero or is this a long drawn way of getting the three e or i'm sorry or none of the above throw the game ending pick offense woes woes and blows that's the story of the offense for iowa man they couldn't get it done it was right in their lap sayonara late in this one iowa's out of here they're a one and done and we're at the end just four teams left and one of them is yet to play and it's landing on that team northwestern's first opponent in south america ucla bruins northwestern hanging tough in this one down by eight just selling the bag on that handoff not sure why you hand off like that when you're trying to win the game but ucla UCLA in this case, that's a good handoff because they get the big first down. Will the Bruins be able to sustain this lead? This drive will go a long way in showing what will happen. Northwestern, a couple solid pieces here and there, and a couple guys that helped out in my DM video when I created a college football team. Shout out to Kenny Soares and the team, but that field goal from UCLA is going to get him up by 11. Third and two, number two, looking for an open target. It's out of bounds, fourth down. Ben Bryant and the Cats going for it. It's a little play action. He's got an open man across the middle. Back to the second, fourth down on the same drive quick slant and he's got it wow so against odds here they've converted on two fourth downs and they're still alive in this thing and put a pin in it they are no longer alive they're dead ours didn't even want to chance it in case there was somehow some way there was a 12 point play that existed on a punt return he kicked it out of bounds and it's wrapped so ucla survives of course and moves on to one of the final stages in imperialism northwestern thanks for hanging out and thanks for playing the final three it is getting down to crunch time ucla is gonna have to prove it ucla will play usc so it's a socal showdown before the championship game against penn state wow i am a little surprised by this usc up by 25 i did think usc could pull this one out but decisively wow never any question or doubt as who was gonna win this one you USC's got a date for continental supremacy. It's going to be USC versus Penn State. So much on the line. Will USC claim South America and compete at the next level for global domination? Came a long way with 18 teams in the beginning, and here we are now down to the final two. Remember, you got to go in the comment section and let me know which 99 overall campus legends will be joining the victor of this next game. Both teams going balls to the wall here for South America. 28 28. Everything is on the line, and it comes down to Caleb Williams taking off to scramble. Touchdown. Caleb gets the lead. 
but he just hurt himself with the poison ball. Therefore, Miller Moss is going to have to step in and sustain the lead. Miller Moss won't have to worry about it too much if the defense is doing what they have to do, and they're going crazy on Bo, as you see Drew Aller is already knocked out. Miller Moss facing a third and 15 on his first drive with the pigskin, and what is he doing? The IQ there, he should have just thrown that away. Third and four for Bo. He's going to step up and keep it. What a run for the first. Not sure why Drew Aller keeps getting knocked out of this game, but Bo had to step up in one of the early sessions too. So far, Miller Moss has been a massive step back for the offense. Backup quarterback versus backup quarterback for the championship game in all of South America glory. Bo seems more adept at shaking off the sack and getting back to work. The clock just under four minutes. Number 10 running like he's got bricks in his shoes. Bo says, that's all good. I'll slip it out to the 10. I think it's the brick guy and he gets the first down anyway. The reason the man probably has less acceleration than usual is because they're in this up-tempo snap a playoff almost every few seconds. Can Bo leave lead this team forward read option stuffed trojan defense needs a stop and they're not going to get one into first and goal one yard to the end zone keandre lambert smith the money man on that last play and hello number 14 what's your name big pick big player special team special player Bo's not going to have too many more chances at this rate the defense for usc is really strong and he's going to need a miracle t minus 57 seconds and bo's got his connection over midfield here we go Bo looking once more for someone he's just gonna step up and do it himself good play after a false start it's third down he's gonna step up and take it once more first down good run honestly I don't have too many complaints about Bo's game I mean it drew Aller it's unfortunate he's hurt but Bo's been pretty solid that conversion was only good enough to buy him one more play you gotta go to the end zone you're out of clock and he's wide open are you kidding me time expired that was nuts and the extra point is good we're going OT third and four you want the touchdown you do not want to settle for three after all of this and they get it Christian driver touchdown Trojan fans you're probably trembling right now because we've seen nothing but a delayed and sloppy offense with the new quarterback like no kidding that was actually Miller Moss's first completion of the entire game he was in for like the whole fourth quarter didn't even complete a pass until that point so yeah talk about a time to step up more like now come on baby let's see if he has another trick to pull out of the bag of tricks and he's going for it and it's intercepted number four Penn State just about seals it here all they got to do is kick a field goal. No friggin' way. Kalen King picked that off, but my system glitched. So we're into another round of OT here where they're giving USC the ball back. Nittany Lion fans were done dirty here. This is unbelievable. And Miller Moss is playing like a new man with new life. And it glitched again. So... Penn State never got to see the field. Unfortunately, I can't let this stand. I mean, Penn State actually just got hosed. They should have won. So the only way I feel comfortable about accepting that result is to sim another game, have them go head to head once more. USC needs to show that they can actually win the game fair and square without a hose job from just a bug in college football revamp. So um, that's what we're doing. We're going to sim it out. You and me, we're watching it together. We're seeing who comes out on top. And that ultimately is going to be the, the victor of South America. And it looks like USC is showing that they are capable of doing it with or without the bug. So, okay, I guess that's just the way it crumbles. Best two out of three just to ensure that the result we saw was really legit. And USC is up early in the second quarter. Penn State is coming back into it, though. Regardless what happens here, I mean, it just feels like, you know, either team is hosed one way or another. It's like... USC is proving they can hang, they can they can win the game just as equally as Penn State. But Penn State honestly should have won that game that we were watching in overtime. So it's going to be another OT one here. And it looks like USC wins it again. So 49-46, they prove in this best of three format that I just simmed that they are the champ. I had to do all that to ensure that USC was the South America champion after all. And you know what? They got it. With USC coming in and claiming South America, they're going to be going up against Hawaii from Europe, Arizona from Asia, and Ole Miss in Antarctica. Our global imperialism conquest continues today in Africa. Since we can't physically relocate college football teams overseas, we can try to mimic the conditions. So let me introduce you to the challenges in today's video. It's all about the heat wave 
Wave Challenge, meaning we have to play on the driest field in college football, which actually happens to be Nevada. Every game has to be turned up to the hottest and sunniest sliders. These players are going to be cooking. And lastly, substitutes are going to be a big deal. We're going to have to mass substitute the entire offense every third drive. And now without further ado, we spin the wheel of ACC teams to determine who goes first in imperialism. And it starts with good old Pittsburgh. Pitt's going to have to start off by going down south. That pits them up against Clemson. Looks like conditions will be a steamy 105 as that's the highest NCAA 14 can go. Pittsburgh holds Clemson to a field goal. And remember, we're on Nevada's field. It's supposed to mimic the dry conditions found in Africa deserts. Down by eight, the boys in blue and yellow just need some positive plays. Really hoping that in this next game, we get to actually see and feel the weather conditions a whole lot more as that fumble ruski, Clemson comes on top. Pitt starting to burn timeouts and honestly that costly fumble is going to cost them this whole thing in my opinion as it's going to need a lot more work to get down and score twice. But sure, we can go ahead and check on these guys, see how they're doing. Fourth and 10, it's not going to cut it. So we start off with a defensive battle in the imperialism conquest for Africa. It's going to be the Clemson Tigers moving on to the next step. The first domino has fallen and Clemson is victorious. No time like the present. Let's jump into the next one. Stanford, the new ACC team. We're going to send the Cardinal to the left. And to me, it looks like Stanford's trying to get off this island and conquer Duke. Third and four, the Duke Blue Devils going across the middle. No one home, fourth down. Stanford held the opposition to only a field goal. And now they got a chance completing on a big one here to try to take the lead. Once again, another blazingly hot 100 five degree day out here in Nevada. It's dry. Everyone needs water breaks. In this war of attrition, Ashton Daniels and Stanford are going right down the field into the red zone, getting close to the end zone. On second and goal, this could be a QB keeper and he scrambled and fumbled the bag. Big man number 90 picks it up. Another fumble probably with implications here the whole continent it's easy to get tired when you're baking in the hot sun and another team fumbled the bag barring a miraculous play on from the defense it's just wraps and that is all she wrote duke gets the dub and man it was close stanford was threatening and they threw it stanford tried swimming away from their island but they drowned in the attempt challengers are zero and two so far in the early imperialism slate and it's gonna be clemson back on the clock let's figure out where they gotta go headed south to go up against virginia huge fourth down clemson's going for it the quick out and he did he get it i don't think he got enough no turned over virginia defense was there to swallow this one up and the running back was inches inches short will the Cavs make it right here on offense and brother where was that running back going another third down opportunity for the Cavaliers gonna go across the middle and he bounces off the tackler but still doesn't get the first with Virginia punting it back to Clemson both teams are gonna go on their third drive of the fourth quarter meaning we're gonna have to enable the water break rule this is Clemson's third drive on offense a little look at the second string oh third and 12 two and a half minutes to go will they convert and he's wide open number six just breaking free third and eight dropping back here got a man and he's gonna be just short and oh my goodness with less than a minute to go virginia is driving all the way down and has a first in goal absolutely massive third down right here hand off to the running back he's gonna throw a stiff arm but get stuffed and did he just fumble again did he really just do that clemson defense scoops it up and is looking like they're gonna go the house to the end zone touchdown tigers seal it with a big dagger i'm telling you three times in a row a fumble decides the winner and are you serious that's the third time in a row that a fumble has just decided the winner of the game so far ball security's been tough in the blazing sun in miami let's get it on whipping that arrow around the wheel now you get to see another virginia team virginia tech miami Hokies trying to do what the cavaliers could not and that is win a game putting up a valiant effort against their rival miami third and goal will the defense stand tall i think think so they're gonna make the stop but as you can tell celebrating virginia tech was way too premature as they just got bodied and that was all they wrote in this rivalry game it looks all misty there it's the odd angle all right let me stroke that acc wheel and see who we get next with our luck it's gonna be clemson again are you kidding me can't make it up but clemson is just seriously getting a lot of action early the trajectory pointing down makes me think it's gonna be louisville well for this one clemson has left really no doubt as louisville is gonna have to work hard than five minutes to go. Jamari Thrash with that last catch in first down. The only thing that's been thrashed today, though, is Louisville offense. 
Clemson defense is thrashing him. And man, he has been running like a dog today. 168 yards on the ground. They're going to give it back to him up the middle. Touchdown. Live looking at Plum Dog Millionaire here with 40 seconds to go. Can't get anything going. Looks like Plummer's not going to be plumbing anything much longer in Africa. So he's going to have to take his Cardinals home. G to the G to the Clemson Tigers. I think that's 3-0 now on the young season. Can they keep it up? Down go the Cardinals. Clemson continues their reign. This time will we land on a different team not named Clemson. And yes, Florida State. Seminole Nation, you guys are headed down to go up against the Mustangs. Here come the Seminoles and by college football revamp standards this will be an upset if Smu holds on big third down here goes Travis across the middle he's got a man number four scores touchdown Keon Coleman secured the lead for Florida State and that's another guy that made an appearance in my college football DM video so shout out to him and Smu is going to be facing a fourth down Mustangs just cracking into the red zone but because of the heat spell they have their second stringers in giving the first string a break it is their third drive after all and oh my goodness the receiver just broke free just ragged off the DBs. Kevin Jennings got his boys down here within the five. He's going to take off and get dropped. They tied up with a field goal. So it's OT, OT. There's never much love when we go OT. Travis and his receiver, they get just enough. Just about equal in total yards. First down. Travis going to step up and do this one himself. Florida State defense coming alive right now in overtime. And yeah, with third and 23, I did not expect this play to do so well. Oh my gosh. Who do you think is going to come out victorious? Will it be the Mustangs? Will it be the Seminoles? We're all tied up going to double overtime. Because just like that, it's first and goal. These guys mean business and they got a wide open receiver touchdown mustang fans are you ready seminal fans are you ready bring it everything you got in the mustang defense huge sack it's game oh baby our first major upset in africa this is crazy headline news here smew gets the dub and downs the Seminoles. Ladies and gentlemen, they got him. Onward to new conquests, and it's gonna fall to Boston College. Where will the Eagles play? They're gonna head to the right and down. It's none other than a Wake Forest Boston College matchup. I didn't know Boston College was like that as they're coming in with some energy. Doing Wake Forest dirty in this one, they have three times as many yards, and that was an interesting motion play here. Stepping up the quarterback, just makes nothing happen. And I guess Wake Forest is not suited for the heat because they are down by three touchdowns. And hold on now, first down though. Main man Mitch here leading the Deacons down into the red zone and he wants cash. Third and 20, it's not looking favorable, but why not let it fly? He's got a receiver and that is a first and goal. Fight for the Minches, big man. Second and goal, he's got his tight end touchdown. Congratulations, Eagle fans. I'll see y'all in the next. Fly, Eagles, fly. Rewind that. Let's run it back with Smew getting another test in this one. Upsetting Florida State in the first one. What will be the encore? George Georgia Tech. Mustangs got a six point cushion right now in the fourth quarter going up against Georgia Tech and they're not going to convert here. So will Georgia Tech get a chance to take the lead? King's been the quarterback back here for a while and that third town's going nowhere. And this is danger zone for the Jackets. They don't want to see anything on the offensive side of the things. Oh my gosh. They picked it off. Lost my train of thought. I was just going to say a first down would be costly. And now look at the Jackets. Late game heroics keeps them in this one. And a first down gets them that much closer to the end zone. Haynes King is going to have to pull something out of the magic trick. And that first down will do. But I need to see a little magic, a little pizzazz. And that option past the hair is just what we wanted to see. What is up with the clock management and teams getting scared of going for another play? Touchdown anyway. Mr. Stone and the Mustangs in danger right now. Third and 10, make it a fourth and four. All they need is field goal range and they still have two timeouts and a slip screen. Is that the right call? No, sir. Head on home, Smew. Safe travels back to the United States because Georgia Tech has a future date with an opponent in Africa. And just like that, Smew's upset victory over Florida State is a distant memory. The wheel is cranking and it's gonna spit out Georgia Tech for a back-to-back -back test. Well, these guys have nowhere to the left and up to go, so it's gonna have to be slightly to the right. And here we go, Clemson, Georgia Tech. Well, I think it's safe to say Clemson is warmed up. Am I right? Oh my goodness. The Heat is absolutely doing nothing to the Tigers, and it's safe to say that Georgia Tech's time in the sun was short-lived. And just like that, that's it. In the waning seconds, Georgia Tech punts it back to Clemson. It is a wrap. Beat them by 30. What a performance from Clemson. Clemson is battle-tested and proven at this point. They have a 
big piece of Africa. Here we go. Let's see who's next. It's going to be Cal. No. Boston College on the clock. Seeing a lot of similar teams getting picked. And look, we're facing Clemson again. Eagles technically 18 points out. That's three possessions. I don't know what you can do in three minutes. But it's definitely not going to stop these guys from trying at least. Here we go. Third and short. He's going to slip it out to the running back once more. And he's stuffed again. If they can't convert here, I don't think we need to see any more. So they do convert. That's another thing I've noticed. The read option is very popular here in the red zone. As you probably imagined, it was too little too late as Clemson is going to be hard to stop. G to the G. Tigers moving on once more. I think that's like five or six battle-tested wins. Let these guys cook. The expansion continues. There's still a handful of teams that are yet to have their name called. And are you serious right now? Clemson again? Might as well make it the all Clemson episode at this point. The team that makes the most sense with is Syracuse. Hold the line. I'm just shocked to see a team that's actually close in a game against the Clemson Tigers. Sure, they're going to settle for three right here, but that'll give them the lead. This is a game-changing stop right here if they can get it fourth and six he has all day he finds his guy but it's short orange defense makes the stop are you kidding me right now the orange on defense get the stops they need and get the points on offense so orange upset clemson after their long reign here in africa there's a new victor in town i guess clemson couldn't handle that syracuse smoke and the orange are hanging in there. Well, that was a plot twist I was not expecting, and finally Cal gets their first attempt, sending the Bears to the left and up. And oh brother, Syracuse now in the hot seat. Orange quickly put to the test, it's third and five, and he just throws a costly interception. So somehow the Orange upset Clemson, but then get four turnovers here against Cal. Hold the phone. Somehow Cal was not able to capitalize on their opportunity and Syracuse with 10 seconds left are driving. Garrett and the Orange have turned it over four times, yet they still have a chance to win it right now in prime field goal range. This is that type of stuff you can't make up and they're gonna go for it with three, two, one. They're running out of time. They don't even go for the field goal. You guys are clowns, man absolute clowns there's no excuse for this Syracuse still had a timeout and could have been a game winning field goal but chose to go to OT for whatever reason I guess they just felt like really proving themselves or something because there's Garrett he's gonna take it in and score but now you guarantee Cal an opportunity because they get the ball too in overtime and they're gonna score right on back all right somehow they're gonna say he didn't reach his body across so they're gonna have to try again and wait a minute third and goal will they actually score fourth and goal the game is literally all on the line right here right now and they can't do it so Syracuse survives oh I'm unbelievable they literally could have won it with a field goal they said nah we want overtime just to make it a little more fair and they still win first test in the big boy seat they shrug it off a handful of teams remain and Syracuse are you serious what is up with the wheel today it keeps picking on the same teams that's Miami Miami looking to dethrone the orange and they have a first in red zone now looking at a first in goal can the Hurricanes cash in right here right now yes they can orange had a nice ride but I had a hard time believing it was gonna last for the long run and well yeah what are you gonna do on fourth and 30 you punt it you win wave the white flag. Miami has dethroned Syracuse and they are now conquering a majority of Africa. That is a big win right there for Miami. They needed this and they're in to the limelight in a big way. Just like that, Miami out of South Africa has come up the ranks and conquers most of, if not almost all of Africa. Wow, it's gonna be Miami again. The wheel is addicted. He keeps choosing the team that is holding the majority of the land. Since it's pointed down rather than up, that means Duke, Miami. Third and 10 for the Hurricanes. They're up by a clean 17. Duke's having a hard time here. Down into the red zone, Duke is driving with a minute left. They have to do a lot of work. Despite the impressive performance today from Leonard and the Blue Devils, it's gonna be a little too late here against the Hurricanes. Unless you score now get the onside kick score again get the onside kick score again get the onside kick score again get the onside kick and score again and get the onside kick i think it's a little too late touchdown leonard and the blue devils these usually never convert when i watch these and i just ate my own words oh my gosh wait a minute can the unthinkable happen i mean they got the onside kick and uh deflated bro that that's way to crush my spirit there Congrats to the Hurricanes. You guys just pulled off a wild one.
Say goodbye to Duke, their little cubicle, and they're part of the island because it all belongs to Miami now. This is seriously wacky how imperialism has been shaping up and Notre Dame finally gets a crack. It's wacky in the sense that we have three teams yet to play and Notre Dame's going straight for the crown. As expected, I felt like this one was gonna go down to the wire. Notre Dame up by six and the Miami defense is swarming and they cause him to fumble. Is that gonna be recovered by Miami? It is. My oh my, Notre Dame had the driver's seat and they cough it up. Will the Hurricanes cash in for pay dirt? Henry Parrish literally just ate that dirt. He'd rather see the end zone and uh oh Notre Dame defense and what are you out of your mind so much to unpack on that last sequence he didn't pick it he caught the touchdown he shook the sack and he missed the extra point what in the world that was a wild 10 seconds and I just can't believe it it's all tied up 30 to 30 and Miami's gonna drive down the field once more third and six a little play action here he's gonna throw it out to the out receiver there Jacoby now it's the two minute drill for the fighting Irish Miami couldn't do anything with their opportunity third and ten and the Irish need a big play here and he drops it this ball has been going back and forth and on third down Miami converts both teams have been punting it back and forth the last couple drives, and because it's so hot out here, you know the rules. The second string offense has to spell the first team just here for a smidge and leave it to the backup quarterback to win the game for the Hurricanes. Just less than 12 seconds to go go Miami's doing everything they need to do just not taking sacks guys for goodness sake back-to-back -back sacks here has put you guys pretty much out of field goal range get it off instead of like a 40 yard chip shot it's a 52 yarder does he have the boot and he wins it our kicker from the DM video also comes through with a big boot and he actually replied to us in the DM so shout out to you man you are a stud muffin for winning this one unfortunately for Notre Dame luck was not on their side as Miami moves in well there were three teams remaining two in the state of north carolina and the wolf pack here we go let's figure out where they got to go that's gonna be miami here we go again miami up by eight over the wolf pack they want a date to the championship game and they're doing all they can wolf pack need to hold if they have any hope left in this one and henry's gonna take it to the end zone does nc state have the kahunas to come back down by 15 it's gonna be hard it starts right here right now though if they can just get a first down there we go honestly not too offensive efficient right now in offense but a big play right here to 82 once more we'll get them right back in the ball game down by a touchdown Wolfpack choose to punt and trust in their defense okay that's a little interesting Miami's got a pretty fire powered offense here and they couldn't do it fresh out of timeouts this is literally their last chance to make a stop and they do Miami wants to finish things right now and they go for it on fourth and six and find a wide open receiver who just breaks free finishes him Colby Young with the KO and Wolfpack fans. Man, you guys had me there for a second, but Miami is on a freaking roll. I don't know how many games they've won at this point, but that's going to help them a lot if they can secure the continent and steal players. So the Wolfpack got to hang around for a while, but when they got their chance, it didn't mean much. And check it out. We got Tar Heels Hurricanes in the championship game. I don't think the Tar Heels have played once. I was going to say it looked like Miami was best acquainted to the heat down in Florida. But my, oh my, one game was all North Carolina needed to open up a can of whoop. So this is literally about to become an imperialism first. I don't think I've seen a team only play one game and win in the championship game. That's, that's crazy. Miami just with their last gasp here looking for any points whatsoever and then turn it over. Both schools trade garbage time touchdowns so I'm gonna need you all to start thinking in the comment section what 99 overall campus legends do we need to bring for North Carolina? Do we put Michael Jordan in a Tar Heels football uniform? Nah I'm just kidding but seriously let me know what all-time greats should we bring in for the battle for world domination. Miami seriously tried really hard and won a lot of games to get here but it was all in vain. And that's right, imperialism is not always predictable, and in this case, Miami was on a roll, but just lost to North Carolina, who comes in, won and duns it, claims Africa for themselves. So the battle for Earth is really shaping up now with North Carolina determined. We got Ole Miss out of Antarctica, Arizona out of Asia, Hawaii out of Europe, USC out of South America, and your newest victor, the North Carolina Tar Heels, coming in hot for Africa. When opportunity came knocking, they answered. And just like the opportunity you have right now, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe on this video. College football global imperialism, it continues today in Australia. What's up, mate? In the land down under, we have to play by a couple of rules. Jump around. Like a kangaroo, only the players with a certified vertical 
will start in play in this one. We gotta move the top receivers and DBs with jump overall to the top of the depth chart, regardless of overall overall. True to the land down under, we'll have to spin a wheel of defeated teams. One loser will get the chance for redemption and we'll be able to challenge the tentative victor of Australia in a best of three matchup, giving them a chance to steal the continent away. Conference USA is hosting relatively a lot of new teams to the FBS, including Kennesaw State, Jacksonville State, New Mexico State, Liberty. These guys are not in college football revamped, so we're going to have to cut the playing field down in half already. We'll get them right in college football 25, but for now it's boom, 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 and boom. It's a little unfortunate for Australia fans hoping for a long tournament because the wheel just happened to land this way. Five teams all have a fair shot at glory. Kicking off game one for Australia supremacy, it's gonna start with Middle Tennessee. Determining where the Blue Raiders go, it looks like to the right. And okay, Blue Raiders Hilltoppers, let's get it. I just realized this might be an imperialism first here in the Global Conquest, playing at original stadiums. But as you can tell, the Blue Raiders have some work to do down by a touchdown against the Hilltoppers. Dudes with the hops are in the lineup right now and it's not going to matter on that play. As you can tell, Justin Olsen and Javante Sherman can get up. 81 jump apiece. But yeah, they're bottom of the depth chart receivers. Big third and seven here looking to convert and oh my goodness, you just made a massive mistake. Hilltoppers to the house touchdown they're up by two touchdowns now huge pick six and the hilltoppers are up blue raiders though getting down the field relatively quick going to need to cash in right here to make up for that mistake and they do if you're western kentucky you definitely don't want to get too complacent and there we go first down conversion should seal it and oh boy middle tennessee on a mad dash down to the end zone here with no timeouts left he gets dropped they got into the red zone but i think they're not going to have time to get a snap off here four three two one are they going to be able to get it they do oh my goodness here we go this is for overtime and yeah well, that was anticlimactic the end despite the late game heroics there western kentucky is the victor and yeah that big pick six that all about sealed it middle tennessee is going to have to hope for that down under second chance because western kentucky is expanding so let's whip that wheel around the block once more and land on fiu sending fiu to the right holy moly okay this is rough conference usa here is getting decimated some more because fiu doesn't even exist in college football revamped they were in ncaa 14 however However, I think the mod team replaced them with a team like Coastal Carolina. So all of a sudden, only one game in, we have three teams remaining. This honestly feels like a fast pass to World War because Louisiana Tech is now on the clock. So I'm not sure this video is going to last very long. And yeah, the arrow's not really pointing at anyone, but it's slightly to the right. So I guess we could argue UTEP. Louisiana Tech has been handing UTEP the business in this one. And yes, I said UTEP. I know we see Salona Beach on the screen, but this is actually UTEP's roster. So hope it's not too immersion breaking. With Conference USA in disarray with all the influx of new teams, I chose to put Salona Beach as the UTEP replacement. So that's exactly why you're seeing what you're seeing right here. Looks like it didn't matter though in this one because Louisiana Tech with another emphasis touchdown. Not supposed to have any dog in the fight, but it does make me a little sad to see Salona Beach sponges getting exposed. But remember, this is Chris Giddings and UTEP, their roster, their team and that touchdown was by Silas Bundy. UTEP fans, please bear with me here. Hank the Tank was actually a quarterback at Boise State before transferring. I don't even know if he's still at Louisiana Tech anymore, is he? Regardless, he does what he's got to do, drains the clock, and that's ball game. They won by 18. Congrats to the Bulldogs. They're going on to the next step. And suddenly we're down to the last two standing. Spinning the wheel to determine who gets home field advantage, the Hilltoppers do. And I'm not going to lie, the Hilltoppers are filthy in conversation. Conference USA. Given Louisiana Tech the beatdown of a lifetime and on their 51st pass of the game, that's a big first and goal. That was Caden Veltkamp, the backup quarterback, read option, touchdown. When your back gets blown out this bad, it honestly has to get studied. Like, this is unacceptable. No amount of kangaroo receivers on the offense will save you when you're down by 37 and you throw another pick. Back into the red zone for their ninth trip of the day. They're a pass-heavy offense indeed, and wow, they turn it back over. Third and five, Hank. The tank gets blown up. Nowhere. 
Really, we don't need to see much more in this one. We can see that Western Kentucky is the tentative victor of Australia. Up by 30 with a minute 20 to go. They go gun empty, still throw into the very end and get to first and 15. Seriously, I can't hate on it. I mean, the backup wants his reps too, and he's making the most. That will do it here in this one. So Western Kentucky has a date in the championship game. And my goodness, Austin Reed opened up a can. Activating the down under rule, we're spinning the wheel of losers and this team, and it's going to be Louisiana Tech, they're going to have to go into a best of three series with Western Kentucky. So Louisiana Tech on the outside looking to get back in and steal this continent. They're going to have to win best two or three. We are literally witnessing deja vu all over again. Western Kentucky beat down. Louisiana Tech seriously has no answers at all for the Hilltoppers as he just gets in the end zone once more. Fourth and 13 down by 28. The homies just punting again. So I think we can call it wraps. Game one in the books. Kentucky up. Game two in the three game series. Looks like Louisiana Tech decided to strap on the boxing gloves and fight. Only down by two at the moment. If they can cash in, they'll get the lead. Third and one, Hank dropping back. He finds his open man here, and that's first and goal. First and goal, here we go. Up the middle, touchdown, the RB is in. Honestly, for a while, it was looking like Western Kentucky was going to be a powerhouse. And heck, maybe they still are. It's just that right now, they're not dominating like every other game. Davion on that last snag has the most hops in this roster, and uh, that's a first down by him again. Down by six, Austin Reed and company here in the red zone now, and that's a big run. For you all in the comment section, seriously, start thinking right now. You get to see both teams. It's Louisiana Tech or Western Kentucky. Who should be a campus legend? And on fourth and one, he is dotting one up to river helms what a touchdown pass will the bulldogs respond down by one now he's going for it all and they could have had it all deflection interception it's mayhem out here when it comes to imperialism seriously anything goes and that fourth down stop will at least give louisiana tech a chance if you had one shot one opportunity this is everything you wanted would you capture it or let it slip? Hold the phone though. I think they captured it because now they're in the red zone and they can run off some clock. Decisions, decisions. I mean, they're clearly in field goal range, I think. Western Kentucky knows it. They're burning their timeouts and they get the stop. Fourth down, huge to play. Does the kicker have the boot? He is going for a three-point shot. It's good. Strap in, folks. They're going for it all right here. Western Kentucky wants the win, so they're gonna have to hurry. Trying to hold on to that last timeout. They hurry back to the line. Gonna snap it off here. Need to get into field goal range, and there's 18 seconds left. They're chewing a lot of clock. This is something that the AI has been historically bad at, man. It's really unfortunate and immersion breaking here because they needed to hustle and go for the win, yet the AI says, nah. I'm good, I'll settle for one play, and that's game. See, Louisiana Tech evens the series. Game three in the best of three, and Western Kentucky's back to asserting their dominance. They're up by 14. And a little too close for comfort, back against the wall there. They're gonna punt it out and let Western Kentucky get it. Can Austin Reed conduct a drive here to get some additional insurance points? Austin Reed is cooking today, 450 passing yards, four touchdowns. I can see it now. Give him an offensive hero, campus legend, GG. No, I'm just kidding though. It's gonna take a whole team effort really to win at World War. And well, I'd be lying if I said that my stock was pretty high on the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers in world domination. Sure, one can dream, and that's exactly what we'll hope for. For now, with under 30 seconds to go, it is way too late for Hank Bachmeyer and Louisiana Tech. Hilltoppers on top, they claim Australia. So no one is coming from down under this time. Western Kentucky established dominance in this imperialism episode and held on to it, so... Uh, we only have to see what comes next. So there we go. Make it official. Louisiana Tech's out of here. Western Kentucky on top. Just a couple more territories to go. As you can see, Western Kentucky is now slotted into Australia, and they got some big boys in front of them. But hey, this one was short and sweet. Conference USA would look a whole lot different in the next game, so we can get a more realistic imperialism battle with Sam Houston, Kennesaw State, Liberty, all that fun stuff. Our college football global imperialism conquest continues today, more than likely right in your backyard. College football is a tradition, a way of living, and all about getting the NIL bag nowadays. The NIL rule. The highest overall in global imperialism is opting out of the fun, so they will be benched throughout this entire tournament. The underdog rule, who doesn't love a Cinderella story? If you get up by two possessions, you have to sub in your second string defense. Here is a look at North America and where the teams in the Sun Belt were randomly assigned. 
from Mexico down south to way up north in Canada. It all begins with Coastal Carolina and the Coastal Chanticleers with the teal field headed to the right. Therefore, Coastal's actually trying to head home and they have a matchup against Georgia Southern. Breaking news per NIL rule here in North American imperialism, Grayson McCall is opting out, meaning Jarrett Guest is our guest in this matchup. For Georgia Southern, Caleb Hood's opting out. And holy moly, Coastal Carolina has been putting in the work, 42 points today. And yes, as you'll see through the matchups to come, second team defense will be in. If Georgia Southern can bring it within two possessions, that will no longer be the case. Will the Eagles get themselves back into this ball game? There's four minutes to go, and they're going to need some quick drive. Davis Brin behind the helm here without Caleb Hood, and it's hurting them. I'm telling you, though, they're not missing Grayson McCall over on Coastal Carolina's side. Second in goal, handoff up the middle, touchdown. 22 323 passing yards four touchdowns guests did quite enough today and that is the ball game opening blood coastal chanticleers man they get it done and we have action on the board it's a sad day but someone has to fall first it's just how imperialism goes arkansas state red wolves up next let's check out where these guys are headed next so far a lot of action across usa early now we're going up against old dominion Check it in on opt-outs. Dominic Zavada, the Arkansas State kicker, is their best player on the roster. Old Dominion, on the other hand, has been without Jason Henderson. A team full of 70s, it hurts to lose a 95 overall. If I'm going to envy anyone's situation here dealing with NIL opt-outs, I got to envy Arkansas State. They're only losing a kicker as Old Dominion is losing a star-studded middle linebacker, so... Um, gosh, that's been difficult and probably part of the reason why they're losing. And oh no, that's another reason. Throwing a big pick here. After that big interception, Arkansas State just looking to ice this one and they're just about to do it. With third and inches to go, it's a handoff and he's got it and some. So that's going to do it. Arkansas State holds on. Congrats to the Red Wolves. Only had to lose their kicker in this one and they hold on 13 to 10. Jalen Raynor is player of the game. And just like that, we're now square across the United States. Slapping that wheel around Sunbelt teams that remain Coastal Carolina once again on the clock. And hold up now, that's supposed to be Georgia State, not Georgia Southern left on the list. Regardless, doesn't change a thing, and Coastal is headed to the right. In the team that borders most directly to the right is that Cuba, Ecuador type area, so it's gonna be Southern Mississippi. Southern Miss gonna lose a big one here in Frank Gore Jr. And you already know from the first game that McCall is opting out. So far, so good. Guest doing a good job leading his team forward. But Southern Miss doesn't wanna go down without a fight. It's a handoff to number four. That's not Frank Gore Jr., but he did his best impression. Now third in goal to handoff to the other running back, number two, who fumbles it, and that is a Coastal Carolina turnover they get the ball back only costed them a couple minutes now they're back in pretty much the same spot big defensive effort the last time will it be another defensive stand and that's a touchdown southern miss still down by nine so that's a two possession game and these plays here into the red zone are proving to be too much just the finishing touches guest is going to be two and zero oh in the young global campaign for north america so congratulations to these guys they are early battle tested and guest does it again well, all right, it was short-lived for Southern Miss, and now Coastal has all of the southern part of North America. Teams from the Sun Belt starting to drop off, and we're going to continue the journey to South Alabama. Let's figure out where these guys got to go. And South Alabama up in Canada, heading across the frozen tundra to play the Warhawks. Warhawks, Jaguars, they got a first down on this play and a big chunk into the red zone. Warhawks are down without their top receiver because of an opt-out. Or shoot, I was confused the last two plays. Hold on now, this is South Alabama. How can I mess that up? I swear it's the Warhawk red down in the bottom left, confusing me with the red jerseys of the Jaguars. What I said is still true though, they are down an 84 overall receiver, but it didn't matter on this drive. On the other hand, South Alabama is without a 90 overall safety. This is the final chance for the Warhawks and they're literally on the millimeter line here. It is so, so close. Look at that ball placement, a literal, a literal millimeter from the end zone here, and anything could go wrong, and on fourth down, they just don't convert, so uh, easy position. South Alabama not going to rub it in, though, takes a knee, and that's a dub. They get the win here in a close one, and the Jaguars are moving on. And this train just keeps on rolling, so the Warhawks are a one and done. Jaguars are now one win under their belt. Let me crank that wheel a good bit here and Marshall Thundering Herd out of Alaska on the clock. There's really only one way they can go and that's against South Alabama again. South Alabama once again dealing with Banks opt out. 
Marshall, on the other hand, lost Owen Porter. To me, it doesn't feel like their absence really made a difference because, as you can see, the score is 31-14. to 14. The Herd trying to thunder their way back to the line and get some plays off here. And the Herd marched on all the way down to the goal line and cash in. Was it all in vain? Now a 10-point game. The running back for South Alabama, Webb, plunges forward. Forget chewing clock. They're going for extra points here, and they get it done. Impressive surgence here at the end of the fourth quarter for the Herd, but it's all too late. Lefty Cam Fancher trying to make some magic happen, and he's dumped. In 57 seconds, they need a touchdown, an onside kick, a touchdown, and an onside kick. Can they do it? Well, it starts right here with this fourth and goal, and he's going to sling it to number five. He's just short, man. No good. So that caps off another Jaguar victory, and these guys are starting to move 2-0 in the Young Campaign. South Alabama first expanded to the right. Now they're going to backtrack a little bit and take down the herd in their Alaska territory. Marshall one and done. They would have been a lot of fun with guys like Randy Moss on the team. Texas State is up next, sending the Bobcats to the south. And yep, you see that right. The border on the south is Arkansas State. Texas State is down 7-0 right now, and the Bobcats sure could have used their 92 overall sophomore. That's right, the Bobcats had this hidden gem of a running back, 92 overall Mindy, a sophomore RB. Instead, it's Calvin Hill toting the rock, and here's TJ Finley driving down the field. I remember Texas State in their bowl game. It was actually quite entertaining. It was in the early slate, and it was their first ever in school history. Now can the Bobcats go from first ever school bowl game victory to global champs, North American champs? It all starts right here, one game at a time, and they're going to get another first down and get right into the red zone. Remember, the only opt-out that Arkansas State is facing is their 90 overall kicker, and that's a beautiful touchdown to Bo. What a stud muffin on that last play. Finley and Texas State were down 7-0. Now it's 7-7 with a minute 40 left in this one, and he got that one out just in the nick of time. And you got to love special teams, special plays, special players there. That special teams touchdown gave them the lead. So here we go. It's now all on the line for Arkansas State. JT Shrout here only 8 for 27. He is past midfield, but will he complete the job? He's going for a big one, and it's contested, and that looked almost intercepted. Fourth and five, 20 seconds remaining here. This is a monster play, and good catch, but hey, you're short, buddy, and that's a turnover. But yeah. Texas State completes the comeback 13-7, first touchdown pass tied it up, and then a special play from a special player to get the lead. Red Wolves had their time to shine. Texas State is now moving in. Let's go ahead and run it back and see where the wheel takes us. It's Troy. Troy up in the northern wastelands to the right. Therefore, Troy has to face James Madison. Huge losses across the board here. Jalen Green for JMU. And then Reddy Stewart at 84 overall DB for Troy is out. With two minutes left in this one, Troy is dwindling it down, and oh man, the quarterback just grabbed that pigskin and ran. JMU had a fun little run last year, but it looks like their run isn't going anywhere. They quickly met a buzzsaw in the Troy Trojans touchdown. Duke's kicking in this one in turbo, but it looks a bit late, even though that was a great connection. Although the Dukes are at the end of their road in this one, do I have anyone in the comment section wanting to rebuild these guys? They were one of my first rebuilds on this channel, and we did them a lot better than a first round exit here, and the running back just tried to stay up, couldn't do it. Fourth and goal, why the heck not? All for pride here, it's no good. All right, Troy, you're moving on, and James Madison, I'm sorry. Gunnar Watson did the thing today, 134 yards on the ground. Troy no longer confined up north, they can actually expand into the Greenland territory. Half of the Sun Belt has vanished into thin air, and it's time for Coastal Carolina to get their third test. They have been the attacker in three straight. Now looking for full control of the United States. I really have been impressed with Coastal Carolina's resilience without their quarterback McCall. And they have the lead in this one, but hey, not for long. Finley, the six foot seven quarterback, took it in himself on the option play in the last one there. And Coastal, what a connection down the sideline. Massive touchdown. Guest to Bikini, what a connection. And that's what I'm saying, man. Guest with his fourth touchdown pass of the day. Finley showing, though, he has some resolve, and he's ready to duel, and he's got them down into the 11, 12 yards to go. So it's a little bit of late-night fireworks here on the teal field. We take that. Just a few minutes left in this one. Finley looking to do it himself, but to be denied. So Finley spreads out the offense here and just looking for anyone to get open. Held short. Good stop on defense. Texas State says they're not messing around with no little three-pointer. They're going for it all right now, the whole enchilada, and it is no bueno. 
after some back and forth here, Texas State had the one play miracle touchdown. That's literally twice now that I've watched Texas State that they have this one play miracle that just ties things up. This time Coastal gets the stop and they are down by three, so it's time to work. All right, guest, be our guest and take it away here. Third down, it's a draw play and actually it worked out. Little surprised to see that, not gonna lie. So uh, 45 seconds to go here and wow, that was dangerous. Got to move with a little bit of urgency here. 30 seconds remaining, and he dials up a good one there that's in and out of the hands. This is it for Coastal. They've been working with something here in Imperialism, and their journey continues. 13 seconds left. They have to snap this one off. Here we go. It's T minus 10 seconds across the middle. Good connection there. This should be field goal range. Hurrying it up here. I thought they would spike it, but it looks like they're actually going to run a play. So this is a bit odd to me. Three, two. I don't even think they're going to have time for a field goal anymore. Oh my gosh, they're lucky. Very questionable call there with the time management, but they nail the field goal and we're going OT. Anything goes in overtime. Will Guest continue to shine here? He's going for a big play. Touchdown, Chanticleers. Jeez Louise, if they win this game, it might be time to start building the statue. Finley and the Bobcats here might have other ideas, so let's see if they can capitalize on the opportunity. Second and goal, handoff. He's going to go out to nowhere land. Third and goal. He's going for it, and just short. So fourth down, big play here coming. Fourth and goal. It's all on the line here. All of a sudden, Bobcats need this, and they got it. First and goal, handoff. No, it's a read option. He fooled me. Touchdown again. Bobcats score twice. Second and 15. It's a slip screen, and that's going to go just for a couple Third and 13, do they have what it takes? And wow, fourth and about inches, hey? Texas State was celebrating like they just won the dang thing, but fourth and inches is very manageable. So with the receiver in motion, let's see if they dial up a little bit of trickery. Nope, just a straight up pass here, looking for anything. And okay, now they can celebrate. Congratulations to the Bobcats, man. Even though you guys kind of stole my Wildcat saying, eat them up, I guess in this case, go ahead and eat them up. I know you guys say it too. I'm telling y'all, something must be in the water because Texas State with the late game heroics again. Let's keep this thing moving and Texas State, you're going to have to prove it again. Let's figure out where they need to go next. Practically straight up here and from most angles across the border here, I think it's going to be App State. Wow, so far to me, it seems like Texas State is showing that they belong. I don't see a lot of promise here from anyone on App State side and now facing second string Texas State defense. Hurrying back up to the line, the Mountaineers are going to get dropped, sacked, fumble, stripped, every single word under the sun there, touchdown, 55. They just keep eating them up, I guess, and App State falls in their first attempt. And then there was five, so we're winding it down towards the finale, and my goodness, the wheel loves Texas State. Really, only a couple directions they can go now, and yep, it's going to be up. That is South Alabama. I believe I can fly, and Finley, my goodness, man, these guys are working it. Over 400 passing yards today, what can he not do? A little tip at the line. Anyone else here low-key impressed by how well the Bobcats are playing? Just gonna settle for three on this one, but what difference does it make? South Alabama's down by a bunch. Any of y'all play college football fantasy football? Because this is what they call garbage time, and there's a garbage time touchdown to Pritchett. Well, not really any questions here. I think Texas State proved that they are legit, and they're now 4-0 in North American imperialism. So hold the phone now. Texas State's a real threat. Texas State from humble beginnings to now conquering the largest landmass in North America. Four teams left, and there's two of them that are yet to get called. And are you serious? Texas State can't get a break. What is going on right now? However, this time, Georgia State, a new opponent, getting their first crack. Georgia State methodically moving down the field. He scans, he looks, he's sacked. And as he falls to the ground in agonizing pain, he looks up at the scoreboard and sees 36 to seven, Texas State. Georgia State is a whole lot of mid, so to play by the NIL rule, uh, we had to bench a 77 overall receiver. Need I say any more? Texas State has all backups in and they're still moving. Malik Hornsby on his first drive, a cool 4 for 4, 42 passing yards. Why not? Dang, Henry Bryant the third with his fourth sack of the game on that last one, going for his fifth there, but it's all in vain. I don't think we need to watch much more. Texas State has been blowing people out. Game in, game out here. Calvin Hill, the running back with a solid performance. I am suddenly drinking the Kool-Aid, and now I'm a Texas State believer. 
Two tough opponents remain, and they're both pretty solid. It's going to be Troy. Troy is going to have to head to the right. And with that outcome, Texas State is clinched a spot in that championship game because right now it's Troy, Louisiana. Here we go. Third and 10. He's going to drop back, find a receiver coming back for it. Fourth and two. Raging Cajun's most notable opt-out was on the offensive line, and, well, he got it. Troy, on the other hand, down a defensive end. So, really, in terms of, like, star key, like, playmaker positions, no one really out. That's not to say a left guard or a left end can't be a star. That's not what I'm saying. It's just that receivers like that, you know, no one's out of the game. Raging Cajun's with the big touchdown here, and it's all of a sudden a close game. Seriously, a lot riding on this. Let's see who's motivated enough to get to the championship game. Raging Cajun struggled throughout the entirety of this game, but so far they're hitting the right buttons and wow, under pressure, still at least dumped it out. Who is going to take on big, bad Texas State for North America? Will it be the Cajuns squeaking one out here last minute against Troy or will the Trojans hold strong? Second and two, 10 yards out from pay dirt. And there we go. That'll get him closer. First in goal. He's going to drop back, scan the field, go across and hit no one. If Troy coughs it up here on this drive, they're going to have to come down and at least get the field goal. And yep, they coughed it up. Impressive work here from Louisiana. Troy has a chance to respond and he is tackled from behind. Not sure why they're choosing to, why are they killing clock when they have all three timeouts right now? Yo, confusion, confusion, confusion. Hello. Um, well, Troy fans, I guess your team wanted to wait to the very last second and step up to make a play. Now you're just out of time and out of luck. So congratulations to the Raging Cajuns. Coach of Troy, you got to get fired. Louisiana moves on to the championship game. This is big for them. These guys just sprung on the scene with their first game, and now look at them. One win away from conquest completion here, and Texas State is going to be the home team in the championship. Texas State in their magical run is in jeopardy right now. They have to hold. Louisiana's found themselves in a good position here, up by six. Any points gets it to possession. Clearly a touchdown is preferred, but a field goal will do just as nice. And oh my goodness, as I say they're in a good position, here comes the big bad Bobcats with the hit stick fumble and return 40-something yards. The moment anyone started doubting, Texas State says, believe, have faith. Raging Cajuns have been giving them a fit on defense here, but dual threat Finley gets the first. If Texas State can manage to come back and pull this game out as well, it's going to look really, really good. And that is a rough loss. And what I mean is it's going to look really good is that these guys have beaten like seven opponents, and that means they'll be able to steal like seven players from the Sun Belt. Bobcats have been crazy all season long here in North America. It's still very much anyone's game, and Louisiana decides to go for it here on 4th and six On the rollout, it didn't work. Unbelievable, giving the Bobcats here prime real estate to get back at it, and yeah, TJ is the man. You know what they say, it ain't over until it's over, but start thinking right now or doing research about some of the all-time Texas State greats or Louisiana greats and comment down below. We need to figure out campus legends and whoever's going to go on is going to be a menace. Really, for any team here, though, the NIL rule is going to come back and help them tremendously in the next round. These guys were without their best players, and now they're going to be able to steal like seven players of the best on all the teams out there. So suddenly you go from without using any of your best players to now getting all of the best in the Sun Belt. And fourth and 29, you can just about kiss your dreams goodbye here, Louisiana. And yeah, you did everything you had to do except the final inches. Wow, G to the G. Texas State won so many games, so battle tested. They did so much and pull off the championship victory. I'm blown away. This was an impressive feat. These guys are only 75 overall in college football revamped. If we learned anything this imperialism, it's that Texas State, if you're soaking it up like I am, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and drop a like. I'll catch y'all in the next. And in the meantime, you can feel free to check out any of these other videos on your screen right now. They're bangers. College football imperialism, but in the ocean? Yep, that's right. We already have a victor representing from each continent, but there are more conferences than continents if you don't know. So who says a team can't rule over a body of water? Only one rule and one rule only. It's gonna get wet up in here. Pause. What I mean by that is that every game will have rainy conditions since, well, 
the ocean is full of water and water is wet. Here is a look at the two conferences, American out of the Pacific Ocean and the MAC out of the Atlantic Ocean. And this is where the fun begins, a juiced wheel with 26 teams. We're kicking it off with only the worst team in the FBS, Kent State. Let's find out where the golden flashes need to go. Here we go, an extremely exciting matchup that you're all looking forward to, of course. Kent State versus Western Michigan, primetime TV. Big sack here, Kent State with a slam dunk of a play on this wet field. If you're really going to immerse into this and believe that we're playing in an ocean, I need you to believe me. We transported this field from Kent State all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. But yeah, playing true to the worst team in college football, worst team in college football revamped. They are punting it here down 30 to seven with a minute left. It's all about wraps. I mean, look at the difference here. Wow, it was not really close at all. So Bronco fans rejoice and uh, Kent State Golden Flash fans, if there are any of you out there, I'm sorry. Did not take long for Kent State to get done dirty. Was hoping those guys can go on a magical run, but a hey, nonetheless, Let's kick it over to Miami and the Red Hawks. Sending the lads to the left and up. And very nice. We got Eastern Michigan. So the next game played on a Navy aircraft carrier is another blowout of the sort. If you're a Miami Red Hawk fan, you are dreaming right now. And that was a mean stiff. Eastern Michigan, however, has got to be one of the candidates to rebuild first in EA College Football 25. That gray turf and this poor school. Red Hawks driving all the way down here. Third and goal. They got the easy touchdown. Just padding it on, man. Well, well, if you had Eastern Michigan in this one, you were sorely wrong because Gabbert and the Red Hawks took care of business. Austin Ertle dropping down the hammer on defense. With that victory, the Red Hawks get all of the United States Atlantic coast. A little unfortunate we don't get to see the gray turf in this one, but hey, we're going to keep it moving with a Florida Atlantic game. Where will the Owls land? First game in the American, it's Owls Army. I guess in the American Conference and the MAC, blowouts are commonplace. You're either a good team in your conference or you're just really really bad bryson daly the army quarterback struggling in this one couple costly turnovers he gets some points here but it's too late the owls have been playing some good football all day and they're savages right here fourth and two they're going for it they really don't care already up by 33 congrats to the owls they took care of business today and they're going to be a tough team in the american i believe so the owls did their thing and it's going to lead to another matchup here kicking it off with toledo holy toledo they're going to play bowling green toledo trying to kick into another gear here fourth and one and they couldn't get it oh man are you kidding because they couldn't come through on that last drive they wasted so much time and it's fourth and 15 and what in the world were you thinking with that play Toledo only mustered up 87 passing yards today in Bowling Green's in victory formation somehow some way they got a chance left here with clock expiring it's not like they can get a 10 point play and solid pass connection but uh G to the G, Bowling Green is going to come through on top. Falcons got tested, but they were not to be denied. Don't you just love cranking a giant wheel? Let's see who we get next, and it's going to be Central Michigan. Huskies actually going for it here, fourth and five. That play just held up for so long. I mean, my goodness, Central Michigan had all the time in the world to sniff it out, and they needed that turnover because they're down by two, two touchdowns. Unfortunately for the Chippewas, they're running really low on time, so let's see if they can make it interesting. Third and eight looking for the end zone going across and his receiver dropped it it is slippery out there so grip boost with that drop i mean how much will weather play a big factor in this next game for college football 25 i'm sure it will cause some havoc and be pretty realistic as we see in this one a low scoring affair true to rain games hard to hold onto the ball roll huskies in this one a lot of teams still to play as we're working two conferences at once now let's give a chance to navy army already got done dirty what will happen with Navy. Tough one here against Tulane. This is pretty wild. I just realized Navy and Tulane going at it. These are like the two best suited teams for ocean warfare. Like, come on, think about it. Navy's occupation is out on the waters and Tulane is the green wave. It's a wave. Huge conversion on that last fourth down here. Navy getting into the red zone and Tulane defense swallows him. Tulane is actually going to cause some problems, I feel like, in this imperialism. And oh man, he dropped a touchdown in his hands. I have a feeling that won't be the last time we see something like that. Fourth and 15. Do they have it all here for the big play? Yes, they do. Down the field they go. First and goal. Stepping up. Touchdown. But unfortunately for Navy, one first down here ruins their chance at any comeback. And yep, these guys ran out of chances. Time Time expired going for a big play on fourth and 15 he's got it all and he will go all the way touchdown navy 
unfortunately for them they're eliminated what a way to go out in this one with a touchdown so both military schools eliminated pretty early in this one well unfortunately for them the show must go on and now it's Tulsa's turn sending them boys down against Tulane they're up again Tulane feeling a little threatened in this one down by four Pratt's gonna step up and take it all the way just at the one funny play on words again Tulsa's golden hurricanes versus Tulane's green wave these guys are meant for the ocean with big a big third down here up the middle the running back shady clayton is doing his best touchdown dance and the momentum is definitely in the wave side here because it's a huge third and 28 nothing doing just two minutes left in this one another third and goal they want more points and it's a ginormous pick instead that interception was costly boy oh boy he chose a bad time to cough it up and <laughs> coughing it right back up great defensive back play there by number 11 he read that like a book Monroe with that last pick I guess Braylon Braxton didn't want it bad enough because now Tulane's running out the rest of the clock and Tulane holds on for the win it was a close one here and it could have gone anyway well just like that Tulane all of a sudden 2-0 in this young campaign go ahead and grip it and rip it see where it lies it's gonna be the Charlotte 49ers and they're gonna have to go south so we got a Niners Rice matchup fourth down Rice Owls going with the read option quarterback keeps it and he's got a nice gain for the first down JT Daniels has already made a couple mistakes in this one can't afford another gotta go for some points and a third and eight first down conversion it's first in goal just under three minutes here third and goal honestly if you don't get it here they do so they're right back in this game someone needs to step up as a hero in this one fourth and one a minute 30 to go rice wants a touchdown and they throw a pick instead massive interception the hero is going to come in charlotte's direction the rain was a little too much to bear they're getting seasick out here in the ocean charlotte is scoring it and dagger in it. Congrats to the 49ers. They're gonna move on to the next step and their boat is still afloat. Let's keep this thing rolling. We've had a lot of good action so far and Owls are back up. Owls need to continue. I mean, really only one direction up north. That's gonna be Temple. Owl v. Owl. Question of the hour right now is who is the better Owl? First and goal, they're doing well right now and that read option is filthy. Touchdown, Owls. Florida Atlantic and these Owls usually better equipped with the rain, I would think, but they're struggling mightily. That sack and turnover is gonna cost them the game. Owls managed to hold hold the owls to three points now they have a little drive going here and okay any momentum they had whatsoever today absolutely squashed temple on top and it was crazy really uh, florida atlantic had 384 total yards temple only had 200 it's just the stellar defense came through for him well in this case i think we learned who is the better owl the wheels on the bus go round and round round and round red hawks are up welcome to miami and to me a diagonal arrow is pointing towards western michigan broncos on the move already up by 18 and they want more western michigan may be no buster Bronco, but they sure are busting their way through to the red zone. And I guess the Red Hawks forgot to show up in this one. Fourth and 20, punting it back. And with 19 seconds left, they're punting once again. Yes, this is deja vu. Uh, they get a chance to get the ball back and don't do anything with it. Honestly, to me, it was pretty cut and dry. I think we knew the winner here as soon as we jumped into it. Tracing and the Broncos moving on. From the Arctic cold waters up north, they can now move in to the mainframe. Let's keep spinning it and see who is up next. It's going to be really Western Michigan on the clock already. These guys just proved it. Now they got to prove it again. Team most directly north and to the right-ish is Buffalo. Third and 11. They're trying to leave it all on the line right here. Big play and connection. He's got the first down. The Bronco quarterback drops back. He's looking, surveying, and he sees a bunch of white big defensive lineman in his face the road to a comeback starts with one step and this is a big fourth down step <laughs> and yeah slippery ball so there you have it. it was all fun and games for the buffalo bulls they're gonna move on to the next step just patiently waiting their turn they finally get the opportunity and they make it count so they got a lot of land or i'm sorry i should say water speaking of teams that have patience there still are quite a few we've yet to call and akron is one of those teams zips always get picked on for being pretty bad can they come through the cinderella run starts with niu well can we give a round of applause to akron for at least trying 
Akron has already decided not to call any timeouts in this one, and they're giving up. So Akron did what Akron does. Unfortunately, they're one and done. Continuing on our conquest, it's going to be Ball State. Cardinals need to go down south. So it's going to be a battle of the birds against the Falcons. Falcons are in the driver's seat, only up by one point, but they're in a good position here to potentially get more. However, for Ball State, they need a stop and a big one. Defense made the play they were needing, and now it's up to the offense. Can they get the first down here? Short by one. Honestly, it should be manageable, and the running back is going to pick it up with a few extra. You can see water splashing up all around these guys on the field, so passing is not usually ideal. Unless your back's pushed up against a wall like these guys, you usually see a lot of handoffs. Just under 30 seconds here. Will they get a few more? They will, so this is a manageable field goal for the win. Job well done by the O. It's up to the kicker, and he's got the chip shot. And would you look at that? Ball State did the thing they had to do, and that was drive down the field and get the dub. So in the battle for bird supremacy, it falls to Ball State. Only four teams left in the MAC, and there's still a good amount in the American. South Florida got the nod in this one, and they're headed straight south for the Roadrunners. Bulls are tripling the Roadrunner production right now in offense, and the quarterback's going to step up, keep it, and score touchdown. At an initial glance, it looked close, but now the Bulls are really starting to pull away. Ready to let it rip. It's just a handoff up the middle that'll do the trick they're up by three touchdowns now it's been a mixture of the rain and the torrid defense from the bulls they are doing a number on them but congratulations to the bulls and a big win here they're excited to keep the dream alive and byron brown just had himself a day so i honestly thought the roadrunners would be a tougher out in this imperialism but the bulls are really good winding down the number of teams left buffalo from the mac is putting it on the line only a few teams remain and they're gonna fight the last team that hasn't played yet on the mac side it's ohio bobcats back and forth ball game in this one curtis work and the bobcats want some more points who knew ohio so far away from ocean is actually playing pretty well in the ocean bobcats couldn't play well enough they were settled for three and now look at buffalo just drive their way down the field into the red zone i don't think buffalo has the same luxury of settling for three they have to go for it all right here t minus two minutes another halfback draw and it's too short that last hole was impressive but this one's even bigger stakes and they don't minute 30 here first in goal he's dropping back and he's throwing an absolute boneheaded interception there i don't even know where he was looking and on the final whistle ohio secures it 20 to 14 and they're moving Moving on big time to get a big win and ohio is now in the forefront and next up it is going back to south florida bulls looking for some more this time charlotte's the name bulls playing some inspired football here up by 19 they're already moving it down into the 10 yards to go south florida honestly just must be used to the rain out there because this is the second time to decisively beat someone and yes i did say beat someone they're up by 19 i'm not holding out hope for charlotte to get their act together uh, because that play was almost a heisman like play they got a little mojo on their side and a good thing going back to throwing that wheel around and the green wave are on the clock where's two lane got to go since the arrows left and south i'm gonna have to go with uab blazers didn't bother showing up in this one as the green wave continue to roll UAB has been honestly content here with running out the clock and on the final play of the game. Yeah, that's an emphasis point for Tulane's defense. UAB wasn't ready. We are getting close to the end of two conferences and really South Florida is getting an awful lot of tests. Will the Bulls continue to ride? Now going for Temple, they want all North and South Ocean control. Man, imperialism is so wacky. I mean, look at the beatdown Temple is giving the Bulls. 41 to three, you're seeing that right. The defense is really good and underrated. Bulls fans, you had a run, but at the end of the day, the Owls are a menace. Still a couple teams hiding in here like Memphis and North Texas, and speak of the Eagles. Mean Green, they are headed up. Another battle of the birds going up against the Owls. Owls looking to pull out their talons and do some extra damage here as they're into the red zone, already up by three. Third and five, he's looking for the end zone, and he steps up to scramble. He has all the time in the world. Oh my goodness. Yet the guy that fell over trying to sack him still sacks him because he just held onto the ball. But any hope for a mean green comeback was short lived as these guys just got destroyed on the defense. Second and goal, another read option. It's unstoppable. Last second chance. 
Will they get points? The game's over, a clock expires, no points, nothing to show for it. Congrats to the Temple Owls, man. They're playing some top-notch football, and it's surprising to me, because in revamped, they are a 75 overall, I believe. As you know, in Imperialism, some teams can get hot. Of the remaining teams, it's headed back to the Huskies. So in essence, this is the final matchup in the MAC before the championship. And congratulations to Ball State. They've earned a bid in the championship game. Huskies up by 11. Curtis Rourke and the Bobcats need to put in some work, and that run down the sideline is a major one will he go all the way breaking through two tackles at the end that was mean for as cold as that run was niu literally answered back in one play special teams special players so that kind of took the wind out of the bobcat sails just a little bit they're gonna need to hope for a miracle again two touchdowns is the name of the game right now and they're moving pretty efficiently so it all comes down to this for big curtis fourth down and he had a man just missed him the rain maybe got in the way so with that niu was able to kneel out the remaining clock and dolphin there i just noticed his last name dolphin uh, and ricky lombardi get the dub and with that win the huskies are now in control of their fate in the championship game against ball state but we'll get to the championship game here in a bit let's spin the remaining four american teams Temple's gonna have to go ahead and show them something. Bring on the Pirates. Temple has been on a run this entire imperialism. Now they're playing a team called the Pirates. It makes me wonder if they've ran into a little bit of a kryptonite here because the Pirates have been patrolling the Pacific this entire time, just waiting for the opportunity. And with under two minutes to go, they're gonna hand it off, take their time, run a few plays. Third and 11, setting up in the empty here and Temple defense all over it. Under a minute to go, though, holding the offense to three points was a much-needed stop. EJ Warner and the Owls are moving right down this field after holding the Pirates to three. Now third and 16. You need a big play here, and the offensive lineman actually just hosed him, pushing him into the defender. Not gonna lie, that was a little crazy there on the line. So now it's fourth and 25. He has to get a big one, and I'm not sure why you choose a dump off. Wow, I thought the Owls were on to something, this imperialism. They were driving up and down against all their opponents until they met ECU. Yar. Talk about making an entrance here in Imperialism. Pirates swoop in late and get the dub. Massive implications here. It's the East Carolina Pirates and they are going to have to battle. Since I think it's pointing backwards to the left, the closest team's the Tigers. 14 apiece. The Pirates were able to stop the Owls and are they able to stop the Tigers too? Really well done option on that last play and quarterback's not going anywhere this time. With second and goal, he fakes it to the running back and then throws it to him anyway and just gets a few. Huge third down here will they get the six or have to settle for three off his back foot he finds a man but it's all stuffed up memphis has a minute and 20 to make some magic happen here in a deflection at the line that really should have been picked off and that would have been game instead tigers get a second crack at it will they capitalize the slip screen honestly has a low success rate that's a bad call fourth and two this is pretty manageable it's honestly a good time to call the screen in a situation like this but man kobe drake was going nowhere pirates defense holds twice and they stand the test and they're going to the championship game and it's honestly fitting that a pirate is ruling over the pacific ocean and with that we have two championship games set Tulane versus ECU, NIU versus Ball State. This is crazy. Here are all four championship bound teams in the wheel determining who goes first and who has home field advantage. Of course, it goes back to the Pirates. So our first championship game on deck here is for the American and it's gonna be the Pirates versus Tulane. Like a tidal wave, Tulane's energy is just mounting up and they're looking to cash in. Down by a touchdown, they're looking to turn things around and in a big way, that run was a good one. This is for all of the Pacific Ocean. You have to leave it on the field today. And this is your opportunity in the comment section to let me know what Tulane legends or East Carolina legends do we need to add. On this third and 11, we need to see some heroics and that's a good play going across and he got more than enough. Wow, he slipped his way through. Got them right into first in goal territory and he's stepping up on his back foot. Somehow finds his man still. Will the wave crash and cash in? You see what I did there? flag though and it looks like it's a defensive penalty so it doesn't matter with a third and 20 looming honestly i thought maybe they could try to hand it off and go to ot but wow that stops the clock and gives tulane a chance one timeout left a first down however stops the clock and that is a huge play across midfield they're gonna have to hurry up to the line it's just past the 50. It looks like they're gonna snap it quick and get a play off. And yeah, they only burned two, three seconds left. So uh, need another one here. The QB keeps it and 
time expires. Unbelievable sequence of events. They could have been setting up for a big kick. Instead, it's overtime, and Michael Pratt's gonna run with authority here. Important third down here. Pratt looking for someone and almost intercepted. Oh boy, the two lane kicker missed it in the rain. And on third and five, just looking for one more big play, and might as well just go for the whole touchdown and win this championship outright. So it wouldn't have mattered if he made it actually, because that touchdown seals it. Congratulations to the ECU Pirates, man. East Carolina representing the American Conference and the Pacific Ocean. It's kind of funny that it really turned out to have a pirate represent an ocean. So Tulane held on to the very end, but it was all in vain because now ECU is the champ. But we're not done. We got one more championship matchup, or should I say Mac up, because we're going to the Mac for NIU Ball State. This is to determine home field advantage, and it's going to go to Ball State. We got NIU on the move. It's third and five across the middle. He dropped it, and actually the Ball State receiver is not going to come down with it. The MAC championship, NIU, Ball State, fourth and one. He's got it. With two minutes left, the Huskies are in fast-paced tempo, and they need any points they can get. Ball State up by 11, so it's a two-possession game, and man, the rain is really kicking in. Third and three. He's stepping back at midfield here. He's got a man, so it's going to keep it going. Rocky Lombardi's had his moments throughout this Imperial him. He's going to need another spectacular one here. What will he do right here, right now? He's got an open receiver. That's going to punish the defender and throw another guy off him. Wow. If he scored on that, that was a special pass and catch. And now the handoff's going to get him six. Don't count out the Huskies quite yet as their defense holds fourth down. All out of timeouts. They're in a mad dash to get into field goal range here. Can't afford to take a big sack or nothing. And he went for it all there. I didn't hate his decision to do that there. Now you're just forced to deal with far less time and exactly what you did not want to happen a sack so Tabian Woodard and Ball State really looking to close in on this MAC championship and that spiked ball stops the clock okay Husky Nation are you ready oh no that is a painful way to go out you do a half pack draw I'm beside myself Oh, brother, that is a embarrassing way to go out of imperialism. And with that result, NIU is no more. Ball State is your MAC champion representing the Atlantic Ocean. So I need you all right now in the comment section, let me know what two campus legends from Ball State, that's right, Ball State, offense, defense, will join the team. And the same could be said for the Pirates, an offense and defense legend. And folks, do you realize what this means? We have finished the final battles for Atlantic, Pacific Ocean. All the continent victors are determined. So we have our final eight teams ready to compete in all-out world war. Who's ready and who's soaking it up? Because if you are like I am, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. The college football world is at war. That's right, college football global imperialism. It all started with 126 FBS teams. And they all battled it out across all seven continents and the oceans. One team is going to be able to walk away from this imperialism and say that they were champions of the world. Question is, who's going to get the bragging rights? Every team was able to steal players and bolster their roster. And then in addition, add two campus legends to join them in the fray. Let me introduce you to the teams. Starting off with the victor from the Asia campaign, it's the Arizona Wildcats. They won three games and decided to steal these three players from the Big 12, Travis Hunter, Ollie Gordon, and Beanie Bishop. And without further ado, let me introduce you to the campus legends as voted by you. Our first one on deck for Arizona is Rob Gronkowski. This man needs no introduction. You all know Gronk. Drafted in the second round of the NFL Draft in 2010, he racked up 16 touchdowns in two seasons for the Wildcats. The campus legend on defense is Scooby Wright. Scooby was U of A's sixth unanimous All-American in 2014. Unfortunate injuries interrupted his career, but in 2014 at 163 tackles, not to mention 14 sacks. On the map, starting out in Asia, your Arizona Wildcats are a 95 overall with 99 offense, 93 defense. The Ball State Cardinals, they won two games in their campaign, but because of the group of five multiplier, they're able to steal four guys. They got Marcus, Trayvon, Kenyon, and Kenny H. Kenyon was a round one DB to the Eagles this year. Those are definitely some dudes, but the first campus legend to reveal for Ball State is Blaine Bishop, a safety from Tennessee. Blaine Bishop's in the Ball State Hall of Fame. He went on to play many years in the NFL, including four Pro Bowl seasons. Your next campus legend was Willie Sneed, who went on to have production at the NFL level. He ranked second place in all-time receiving yards for Ball State and also had 26 touchdowns. With an 88 overall across the board, they're going to be a tough out. Moving on to our friends from Europe, we had Hawaii come out on top. Hawaii had three wins out of the Mountain West, but with the times two multiplier, they're able to steal 
steal six players. And they got some solid picks here across the board, but Ashton Genty is going to be a difference maker. Speaking of difference makers, the first campus legend as voted by you all, RIP Colt Brennan. This man practically broke every Hawaii quarterback passing record. In fact, he was in the Heisman conversation twice and racked up over 14,000 passing yards, 131 touchdowns. And on defense, the pick was Isaac Sopaga, a two-time All-Mac player and drafted in the fourth round by the Niners. A key piece of the Hawaii defense and a contributor for nine years in the NFL. Through all the conquests, they were able to bring up their team to a 90 overall. I guess I'm bad at the alphabet because I skipped over E, and E is for East Carolina. It was awfully fitting to see the Pirates in the Pacific. They got three wins, which allowed him to steal six players. A couple notable call-outs here. They have a new quarterback in Frank Harris, the lefty slinger from UTSA. Now, the exciting part to me is the campus legends. We got CJ 2K out here. He ran a 4-2-4 at the Combine and put up 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns on the ground in his senior season. On defense, we got a big boy in the trenches. It's Limval Joseph. Spent four years at East Carolina. He rapidly ascended up the ranks. When it was all said and done, he got drafted in the second round by the Giants. East Carolina's up to an 88 overall. Now kicking it down to Antarctica, Old Miss claimed this frozen chunk of ice. With two wins, they were able to steal Jaden Daniels and Brock Bowers. Talk about loading up an offense, but what about campus legend A.J. Brown back in action? This absolute threat for the Eagles set the school record for receiving yards and most 100-yard receiving games. Hide your defense because Jaden Daniels, A.J. Brown, and Brock Bowers are coming. On defense, how about a consensus All-American and Pro Football Hall of Famey? That's right, we got Patrick Willis back out here manning it down at linebacker. Upgrades bring Ole Miss up to 95 overall. Out of North America, the Texas State Bobcats reign over the Sun Belt. Don't be sleeping on these guys as they had five wins to get to this point. With the times two multiplier, that's 10 players to steal. It's a long list. Jason Henderson tops that list. For the Bobcats offensive campus legend, it goes all the way back to 1980, Ricky Sanders, number 83. Ricky led the Bobcats to back-to-back D2 national championships in 1981 and 1982. He holds a lot of records for the Bobcats and then went on to win two Super Bowls. And then on defense, you got David Mayo, Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Year in 2014, and then got drafted in 2015 by Washington. Texas State looking to be a dark horse, 91 overall. And then when we jump over to Africa, we see the University of North Carolina. North Carolina had an easy one, just one game, the championship, and was able to steal Peyton Wilson, one of the best linebackers out there. North Carolina's first secret weapon to reveal is none other than Eric Ebron, the campus legend, is returning. He left school and declared for the draft early but it didn't take away from any production he was able to put up here. On defense is none other than the machine, Julius Peppers. The man played football and basketball for UNC, but was a unanimous All-American here. Second all-time in UNC history for most sacks in a career. North Carolina with a 93 overall, always a threat to do some damage. Across the Atlantic to South America, USC came out on top here. With four big wins, they got some really good Big Ten players. And a new quarterback in Michael Penix Jr. That's right, no Caleb Williams back there. And who's that at running back? It's Reggie Bush. One of the college football all-time greats is back for World War action with his Heisman Trophy in hand. Another iconic figure out here on defense, it's Troy Polamalu. Probably the early favorite to win it all. They're at 99 overall. Last but not least, hailing out of Australia, the land down under Western Kentucky took care of business with Conference USA. Three wins, times two multiplier, six dudes coming over. Western Kentucky's campus legend is none other than the bulldozer, Tyler Higby. Hilltoppers have produced a couple good tight ends that have panned out in the NFL, and Higby's contending with the tradition. On defense, we welcome D'Angelo Malone, the all-time sack leader. He has 34 of them puppies and was drafted by the Falcons. Coming in at 86 overall, solid yet still underdogs. The stage is set. It's time for all-out world war. Let's kick it off with Hawaii. The Warriors are ready to go to war. And oh snap, they're going to have to go up against the Wildcats. The stakes are super high as every game is won and done. Colt Brennan and Hawaii have been stifled by this Arizona offense and their attack is too strong. Over 630 yards of offense today everyone's getting involved. Big Rob Gronkowski lining up at halfback. They're just giving him the rock. I guess what the game is saying is that Rob Gronkowski in college is a cheat code, and there's another touchdown. Mick Millen here with his third touchdown of the day, over 200 yards receiving. Offense is really no match. It's hard to keep up for Colt Brennan, and he gets a nice play there. And a handoff to Ashton Genty up the middle. That's a deck by Scooby Wright. Scoob's all over that tackle, and it's nice to see the legends making a difference. If there's any shot at a comeback, it needs to be right here, right now. And what a dot from Brennan. Chucky Hines for six. When the smoke clears, you can't blame Colt for the performance today. 330 yards, three touchdowns. Big opportunity here to get off the field. Let's see what the defense dials up. And goodness gracious, Wildcat Nation, your team is cracked. Hawaii knows it too. They're punting on fourth down. They're kind of conceding with three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Don't blame them. It's been honestly a offensive shootout. Last drive, really playing for pride here at this point. 
Colt Brennan on fourth down finds his man. First and goal with under a minute to go, and he's looking for someone, anyone. He found a man for six. Are you serious? How did he connect? Bro, Colt is out here making magic happen for Hawaii. Like, it's all because of him and his quarterback play. They put up 35. And Arizona is headed on to the next round with now seven teams remaining. Hawaii has been eliminated, and the global conquest continues on. Moving on down the wheel here, let's see who we got next, the Pirates. Let's go ahead and have them sail up north to face Texas State. And as we expected, we do have a good one on our hands here. It's Grayson McCall keeping it himself, the Coastal Carolina transfer to Texas State. Big first down. Can't forget about your legend, Ricky Sanders, on the outside. Instead, they go with the other receiver, number four. 15 all the way to the house. Bobcats were a sneaky play in the North American campaign, but they have their eyes set on the prize, global domination. Quick change of field here, and Texas State is back in the red zone. This East Carolina defense led by Linval Joseph is having a hard time penetrating. Texas State doesn't have a ton of flashy dudes, but they have solid overall players all across the board. And on that note, talk about a McCall to Neal connection here. Not the flashiest, but it works. His sixth touchdown pass of the day. Man, I'm really surprised things aren't working out better here for East Carolina with Frank Harris from the Roadrunners just going down. Big sack from James Carpenter. Who knows, maybe they were over relying on CJ2K and it got him into a bad pinch when with that screenplay, they'll get some back. That was none other than David Mayo, Texas State campus legend, and East Carolina's gonna keep their drive alive. Down by three possessions if they get the two point conversion every time. But to me, I'm seeing an inspired Texas State defense. Let's see if they can finish the job today. That was Jason Henderson, excuse me. That is David Mayo decking him for the turnover. Shot out of a cannon here, David Mayo just punished him. Frank, you might wanna try something else because keeping it yourself isn't working. Well, if East Carolina's a one and done here, at least Chris Johnson found pay dirt. Playing till the final whistle here, and Frank just runs him over, flicks it out to the running back, and that's a first down conversion. With all of Earth on the line, I guess you don't play until the final whistle is blown. And look at Chris Johnson just stay up. Looks like our guy there had over 100 rushing yards and 64 receiving yards. And what in the world was that? No shade on Frank Harris here, but I don't know. Was he the right guy for the job? I mean, he's still playing his heart out to the very end. Truthfully, it was more than likely a defensive implosion that caused all of this. And that strip sack fumble is going to ice this one for sure, for sure. All right, Texas State Bobcats continue to keep the winning tradition alive. They won the most amount of games in the regular continental imperialism. And now they're off 1-0. Once more, we will determine who is going to face off in this one. It's Ole Miss. Coming up out of Antarctica, they're going to have to go straight up to face UNC. Defense really came to play for both teams today. It's 2019. UNC's up. And that's a nice snag right there. Jaden Daniels delivered a ball on that last one here. And he's going back to work with the read option. Keeping it himself with a lot of space and the speed. Can he go? Almost off to the distance. Second and 12, another read option. He's just going to keep it and then flick it out to the other running back. And that's a touchdown for number 40, Matt Jones. Good leadership out here from Jaden Daniels as he made the right call and got it over to the right man. North Carolina's no pushover, especially with guys like Eric Ebron lining up. And oh man, that's a big sack on Drake May. You can just feel the intensity in these matchups as there is so much on the line. And that is the wrong time to throw a pick. Tried to force it to Ebron. Come on now. It's just unfair when you bring a pro football Hall of Famer back down to Ole Miss. He's making plays for his alma mater. But the turnover and the celebration was shortly lived here because because UNC is all the way down into the red zone again. Big third down right here, right now. The defense is swarming. They strip him, and he loses the ball. Another huge turnover for the defense. Julius Peppers and the Tar Heels need a three and out, but they're not going to get one. Brock Bowers, first down. Clock is ticking. They need a stop here if they're going to have a shot, and A.J. Brown muscles his way forward for the first down. Man, this is so much fun. You see stolen players and campus legends all coming out to ball today. Bad news for North Carolina is that Ole Miss is chewing up all that precious time. If somehow you can hold them to a field goal, you'll be fine, but nope, you give up the touchdown, Jaden Daniels. Tar Heels cooking up a rapid fire drive though, so hold on now, don't count them quite out yet, and uh, oof. Could have got himself in some trouble there forcing that. And he's going to go towards the end zone. That's Ebron hauling in first and goal. Yo, 207 yards and a touchdown today for Eric Ebron. He has been a menace for UNC. 
But unfortunately for them, they're down two possessions here with a minute to go, even with this touchdown. Yeah, they had to force a timeout on that last one. So only one timeout left here, minute to go. Touchdown, Kamari Morals. It's all up to this onside kick, and they do not get it. Wow, oh wow. <laughs> this has been quite the campaign early in three games right now. We've had some just interesting storylines all brewing. This is an updated look at the map. And here we go round in round, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Let's have some fun. Sending the Australia Victor to the left and up. And that's pointing at the Arizona Wildcats in their 99 overall offense. So yeah, another 600 plus yard day for Arizona. These guys are looking seriously scary with how many points they're putting up per game. Hailing from the Big 12, they got guys like Ollie Gordon, Travis Hunter, not to mention Rob Gronkowski, and what is going on here? Backups in and Scooby delivering blows. Scooby versus Higby, campus legends are seriously proving to make an immediate difference. Arizona's offense is a machine, and they're just going to have fun. We'll have to see how Arizona does against teams like Old Miss or uh, USC for that matter. Hilltoppers though, man, I can't believe it was this lopsided. And hey, well at least they get a little pride. Not much opportunity to see guys like Higby in this one since they've been down with the back against the wall can't even get past three and outs right now in fact Arizona just passed the 700 yard threshold so yeah it's definitely scary hours out here as anyone and everyone's open why the heck not Arizona and their backups go ahead and give them some points too huh third and goal just up the middle it's easy yeah that was a bloodbath uh, unfortunately for the Hilltoppers they never really stood a chance in this one Jaden Delora and the Wildcats just cooked and then there were four. Who's it gonna be? Old Miss has to prove themselves again. Let's go ahead and spin that wheel. Up north is a date with the Wildcats. This game has been a lot of fun. For two teams with 99 overall offense, the defense has really been the story. And on fourth down here, Jaden Daniels, Heisman winner, off to the races again. 257 rushing yards for Ole Miss. Now this is where the rubber meets the road. Who is going to walk away victorious? Ole Miss down within the red zone here, only down by four points. Arizona defense forces Ole Miss to a gun empty look here across the middle, touchdown. Pay dirt found by Ulysses Bentley IV. Big games require big time playmakers, and that's exactly what just happened right here. How will Arizona be able to respond? A third and seven handoff draw? That's confusing, I'm not gonna lie. I get the fact that Arizona has Ollie Gordon, but seriously, when you're down back against the wall, that's not what you do. I look up and down this offense and I see weapons everywhere, yet they choose to hand off when you got guys like Brock Bowers and AJ Brown. This field goal doesn't do a whole lot because you'll only be up by six and a touchdown still beats you. Patrick Willis led defense doing a lot to stop this offense and Arizona is struggling right now in the fourth and there he is back on offense for Daniels in the read option has been money all game long you already know in EA college football 25 I'm taking the read option all the way with Avery Johnson and the K-State Wildcats if you want the smoke online all you got to do is just say so Anyways, things are looking bleak here for Arizona, and they can't even get the stop. First and goal. Wow, 661 yards today for Ole Miss. Arizona only at 340. So it looks like it's about time to say goodbye to Scooby Wright, Rob Gronkowski, and, and Travis Hunter. Unless a miracle turnover happens right here, but Jaden says, no, sir, dagger in ya. I don't know what happened to Arizona's offense here in the fourth quarter. It was close, but Jaden Daniels and Ole Miss ran away with it. Just like that out of Antarctica and Africa, Ole Miss all of a sudden is gonna have Australia, Asia, and Europe. Man, oh man, they run the whole Eastern Hemisphere now. Now there are four teams left and it's gonna be Ball State. Let's see where the Cardinals need to go in this one. Okay, in my opinion, straight down means South America. Oh my goodness, things are getting wacky and wild out here. They have a chance to shock the world. Ball State out of the max, somehow going toe for toe with USC. I'm afraid, I don't know how long that'll last. When we talk about weapons, I think of USC, not Ball State. I mean, there goes Reggie Bush. Man has 199 yards and two touchdowns on the day. You can't keep him down. Nine yards per clip, yet they're still losing by two somehow. I am intrigued to see what is going to happen in this one. And on this last stop, we can't ignore the fact that Blaine Bishop came up and made the tackle. Four-time Pro Bowler, the five foot nine safety. What a stud. The fate of the globe is in the balance right now. Off his back foot, they're going to get the stop. Ball State, I don't know what you guys got left in the tank, but you need to bring it right here, right now. Fourth down, and they get the stop. It's a turnover. Clayton Cole answers the call, and here we go. Second and two, can Hatcher in the Cardinals work it? And Paula 
Palomalo says, no way. All right, I showed love to Ball State, but I gotta show love to Palomalo too. And jeez, man, all right. USC clamps down. They're gonna get the ball back. Underdogs and Cinderella stories across the nation, man, holding our breath. Unless you're a Trojan fan, when you see 99s across the board, everyone wants to take you out, and here comes Ball State. And back and forth we go. The ball's coming back to the Cardinals. They can't feel comfortable with a two-point cushion. I can imagine that much. Number three of the offense versus number three of the defense. My eye's on it, but they're gonna go to the tight end here, and that was a good play. Lane Hatcher with 369 passing yards, three passing touchdowns against a 99 defense. Where are all my Ball State fans? I hope you all are turning up right now. Drama intensifying, handoff. It's going to be a third and six. And Willie Sneed with 192 yards and two touchdowns today. Yeah, that man is cooking for his alma mater. And big number 98, the field goal kicker, needs this three-point cushion, and he's got it. Now up by five, Trojans need a touchdown. They got some time to do it. Big third down here, Penix Jr. needs to step it up, and it's going to be fourth and short. Wow, really, on fourth and one, they choose to punt. They did not trust their loaded offense with Branch, Reggie Bush, Penix Jr. Okay, then. Instead, they let Ball State with two and a half minutes left try to ice this one out, and that's another good carry. If Ball State comes through, I'm going to need someone to go ahead and snag me a Lane Hatcher jersey. What am I talking about? I mean, this is insane. One first down, and it's over. Here we go, Lane. What do you got for us? It's going to be a slip screen, and he's short. Here's the snap, the kick. Does he have the leg? He's got it. Oh, man, I can't believe it. Just 11 seconds away from sweet, sweet victory for Ball State. I thought these words would never come out of my mouth. What is going on, man? USC, I'm telling you. How would it have gone if Caleb Williams was in there? Yes, I do think he's a little underrated here in college football revamped, but one last play. Hail Mary interception. That officially seals it. Ball State, and there is Bishop, their defensive legend. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me, man? Someone go ahead and snag me a Willie Sneed or Lane Hatchet jersey if you're feeling generous, man. I, I can't believe it. My condolences to USC fans, but folks, this is why I love college football. Final three here. It's back to Ball State. They have to prove it once more after that heroic win. Arrow determines if it's a Texas State or Old Miss. And uh-oh, it's Old Miss. Ball State, can you guys handle two 99 overall offenses? I'll lose my drawers if that happens. So you're telling me there's a chance right now. Ball State down by a touchdown, cruising right into the red zone, short by a yard. These Cardinals got massive huevos right now, and they're going for it on fourth and one. So, uh, man, impressive stuff from Ball State as Willie Sneed just hauls it in and gets first and goal. The way Ball State has been playing and how clutch they have been is inspirational, to say the least. It's been a true David and Goliath matchup the whole way, and look at Lane Hatcher, man. That is called grit, determination, fight. Lane Hatcher was not a stolen player, campus legend, nothing, but I gotta show this dude some respect. Look at the grittiness fighting for this touchdown. He even got rocked. Buddy is seriously putting it on the line as if the whole world depended on it. Oh wait, it does. And hello, Kenyon Mitchell. Oh my goodness. Your eyes are not deceiving you. You're seeing exactly what I'm seeing in real time right now. Who are the Cardinals, and why have I never heard of her? I'm going to literally start blushing here in a second if they keep playing this hard. Getting all hot and bothered watching an underdog from the MAC just absolutely put a whooping on Ole Miss. Yo, I got to do something special for Ball State if they can pull this thing out. I'm not kidding. Heck, maybe they're my first rebuild of the new game. Maybe I do something special now. I don't know. Really don't want to get ahead of myself with a loaded team like Ole Miss right now. But it's safe to say they're earning my respect play by play right now, and that field goal gives them the lead. Jaden Daniels, it's not the time to go silent now you've been coming up in the clutch in your other games and there you go that's a connection that'll get things moving bro since when did the mac go so hard i mean that's what i was expecting to see gash play after gash play like that Jaden daniel's starting to cook a little bit now and they're getting closer to the red zone safe to say old miss is in field goal range but uh ball state does want that stop unfortunately it's first down come on ball state defense don't give up on me now all right cards this is probably going to be a touchdown here in just a matter of moments minus three yards really doesn't mean anything when you're already this close He's got all day to throw, too. Third and goal. This looks like another split backfield potential option. No, it's a slip screen. Anyone there to sniff it out. And hello, there we go. Fourth and goal. Cardinals going wild on defense. Both teams still got all their timeouts, so really anyone can do some damage as soon as they get their hands on the ball. And man, these Cardinals don't want a three and out right here. That's the last thing you want, guys. And oh, that's even worse. That is deflating. Oh, no. Pick six. 
congrats Ole Miss fans, but that is a heartbreak. That was heartbreaking for all Cinderella Story fans out here and Ole Miss starting to put it on. Just got to find your inner lane, Lane, and see what you can do. Slip screen, that's just not a good call. Fourth and 17, it's literally hoping for a miracle at this point. Just chuck one up, big fella, and you throw a pick. I thought he had a step there for a second. And it's official. Man, we can put a close on that exciting chapter. Ball State, thanks for the memes. Unfortunately, that is a closing chapter as Old Miss has everything minus North America and the Pacific Ocean. So it's up to Texas State to make a stand because this is the championship game for global imperialism. Don't know if it really matters because they're playing on the college football championship site, but this is for home field advantage. I just want to take a moment and recognize Texas State from the Sun Belt getting this far to the championship game for all of Earth. Global imperialism is a massive accomplishment getting this far and Ole Miss has ruined some people's day on the journey. Oh, <laughs> Oh my gosh, what am I watching right now? 51-34 Texas State. This has been an incredible run for the Bobcats. Just settling for their three points in this hazy college football playoff stadium. But dude, the Bobcats are putting a whoop in 54 points and getting a third down stop right here. Old Miss literally thinks they have time left or something they're down by 20 three touchdowns essentially and they're punting it back to texas state this is crazy though grayson mccall having a great game out here i think texas state since they won so many games they were able to steal so many players and round out this roster they're a 91 overall for a reason and grayson mccall's out here throwing for over 450 passing yards and he dumps that one off they're just short no need to get greedy if you're the bobcat so they'll just punt it back the real question is here is old miss gonna kick it up a notch now they do have the time and the time to get it going if they really wanted to and that's what i'm really out here looking to see if they have what it takes to finish this thing and wow brock bowers in motion here the pressure is on for Jaden daniels as he's gonna throw it out to his running back honestly if i'm the coach right now i'm getting a little bit more urgency for my guys like this is crunch time folks first and goal they're about to cut this thing down to a two touchdown deficit with five minutes to go daniels maintains balance and fights for that and with here on second and goal daniels wants to keep it mayo denies him and there's the all-campus legend making things difficult here third and goal that is gonna get in for the end zone touchdown critical third down here for Ole Miss defense it's a handoff draw and I think they stop him short and here we go it's not over yet by any means Daniel stepping up going across midfield got his lunch pail opened I'm surprised he was able to rally the troops back to the line and snap this one off as he goes for a big play and forces that into the danger zone bobcat interception was this the moment right here where global imperialism was secured number one gets up snags that thing down from brock bowers it's raps man bobcats today we finally learned what happens when you stack all teams against each other in a global conquest we learned that as cool as the Mac was, the Sun Belt is superior coming straight out of North America. What a ride it has been. I hope you've enjoyed and soaked up all of this as much as I have, man. I've absolutely loved making this series and Imperialism's a lot of fun. And yeah, you could just sense Jaden Daniels was under a lot of pressure. He knew this game was over off his back foot, just forced a mistake. The Sun Belt reigns supreme. Your world champion right here, folks. The Texas State Bobcats led by Grayson McCall, ex-Coastal Carolina quarterback. You have all your answers and more right here. This was a conquest. This was quite the ride. Huge shout out to the Texas State Bobcats for coming through and winning an imperialism. And to the victor, the satisfaction. They get to knock off Ole Miss at every remaining continent and then populate their logo across the globe. Now the world is under Texas State reign. Sending out NCAA 14 the right way with a bang. A global imperialism conquest for the ages. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and keep it here with King Sponge for so much fresh content to soak up with EA College Football 25 right around the corner and you're not going to want to miss any of it.